Hmm. We look all professional and shit. Yeah, I'm starting to get there just a bit more perfect. We've actually got the cup of teas now. Like I said, the next, the next, next uh, step along the way is to get two mics, two pop shields. Because I'm pretty sure I could probably just get a fucking, you know, like a multi USB adapter, plug it in there, and I could, probably, I could probably set up a multi track there where one records from one microphone, one records from another, so we both have separate, um, yeah, audio tracks. God, in technology fun. Hello, hello, hello. And, and welcome. welcome. Too much level games. How is it going, ladies and gentlemen? And welcome to this, the first ever episode of the Max Level Games podcast for 2019. <laughs> I am your host, as always, Mr. James Walters. Here with me is the Legs End, Liam Malkin. I can finally do this. The legs end, because you can see your fucking legs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back to our long-time listeners. It's, we're very excited to start a new year with you all. And welcome also to anyone new who'll be joining us here for the Max Level Games podcast. Where we sit here for about an hour or so, more or so, every week. And we discuss all things games, films, and anything in between. Uh, the audio form, obviously, is on SoundCloud. You can find it on video form on YouTube every week as well. There's also a Facebook page, too. You can go on, like, facebook.com slash games. Last thing to mention, obviously, we are adults. We talk about adult things and do adult things as well. So, yeah. your discretion is advised. So get the fuck out. What he said. <laughs> uh, and obviously, if you haven't fucking noticed, it's incredibly, <laughs> incredibly <laughs> echoey in here. And anyone watching along will know that we, we are not in the usual space. Um, this has now become our new space. This is our new space, which is currently, as you can see by the barren walls. <laughs> one wall is barren here, the other wall at the back actually has colour. It's in the middle of being decorated. <laughs> when there's actual stuff in the room, the echo should, quotation marks, touch all the wood in the room, should <laughs> pass. <laughs> but for now, it's a, it's a work in progress. But yeah, this is our new space. It's going to be our new space. I like this. It's, it, it seems more professional. Yeah. We've we got a table. <laughs> Tables, we have laptops, we have cups of tea. Tea? I mean, goddamn. We're, we're basically, we might as well just have our own Spotify podcast at this point. We just need to audio up and get it. Basically, yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. As we mentioned, this is the first episode back from uh, from our break from 2018 to 2019. First episode this year. I know. There's been a lot that's happened. <laughs> Naturally, the three weeks, three or four weeks we're not actually here. Everything shit happens. tons happens. Everything happens. I shit you not, ladies and gentlemen, this script I have in front of me is five pages long. So I'd, I'd advise you get your own drink of some kind, get, Sit get back, a nice comfortable relax. position and just listen to our soothing voices. Well, mine. The mm. fuck's that supposed to mean, kid? Nothing like that. <laughs> Not an hour, kid. Nothing like kid. Not an hour, fam. <laughs> okay, as always, the first thing we talk about on the podcast is any games we played. Now, obviously, it's been a bit more than a week, so yeah. gaming-wise, uh, I've, I've, I've played a lot. <laughs> I've done a lot, okay. Obviously. I mean, I've played a lot, but... Different kind of playing. Yeah. Yes. Um, With a different type of drink stuff. Now, some of the things on our list, on the list here, we both played. So, mm-hmm. just just to, just to make things easier on you, I'll, 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 I'll throw you in first at the games I've got on the list here. So, we've got... The first thing... Right, well, the thing, I think the thing you want to talk about most is the Resident Evil 2 demo. But we're not going to talk about that yet. No. Nope. Let's, cu- let's move on to one of the games we played. The Carnival, Carnival Games VR. <laughs> What did you think about Carnival Games VR, Liam? I enjoyed it. It's a good... It's it, it's it's definitely one of them. It's a good one once you've had a couple of drinks, you get a couple yeah. of fl- lads around. Well, the girls. Well, the girls, yeah. And, you know, we're not, we don't judge here. <laughs> you know, you get a couple of the lads or girls around, and you sort of want to start having a little laugh. You've all a bit, had a bit too much. Mm-hmm. You've had your, you know, your favourite drink, the tequilas. Oh, God. <laughs> but I think it's one of them. It's definitely family friendly. It's a good little laugh. Everyone, no, there's no sort of losers unless you're competitive as shit like me and you. True. Uh, you can throw shit at everyone. <laughs> yeah, which which we discovered playing is actually a trophy. It's actually a trophy. Try and assault the customers, get a trophy. <laughs> exactly as you do. Um, yeah, well, see, we only picked it up because uh, it was it was on sale actually for this January sale. Yeah. You could get the carnival. Well, actually, all three versions of the game was the carnival game standard normal version. No VR was on sale. Then the VR form was on sale, and uh, oh, which that imagine, work? what the carnival games on its own. Yeah, okay. I imagine similar to like Mario Party and stuff. Yeah, I can imagine. It's never it's never <laughs> been a series I've actually touched in the slightest. It's just a case of the missus was like, oh, I like these like these games. I thought. It was on sale VR version for three pounds. Why not? So why? And then not? the expansion was a further three pounds. 
Let's be honest, though. It, it was definitely a good investment. It was, yeah. My only issue is just, like, some of the technical side of things. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, you find it a lot with a lot of VR games, especially PSVR, because of the, like, tracking system they use. Mm-hmm. Um, but the tracking failed on me a lot in that game. <laughs> the throwing games are the worst. They really are. You, you go to, like, proper, huh, and then in-game, which are like, boom. <laughs> it's like performance And then issues. you do the reverse. <laughs> you know, you do, like, a tiny little... Whoosh, whoosh, and then, boom, straight across the room. <laughs> You've stabbed little Timmy in the back of the head ten miles away. <laughs> the, the the one demo, the one game we both played and both seemed to have a great fondness for the the climbing level. Yes. Uh, the first time I first time I was having a go with that, I was constantly clipping all over the place. Yeah. That's why I fell down so much. But then I was like, I figured out where the system was fucking up, fucking me over. I was like, yeah, go, go. Genuine sweat going <laughs> out, down my face, try and make it. So I mean, even yeah. that, it, we even start. It got to the point where you'd figured out the point. You'd figured out where it was fucking up, and yeah. you'd mastered that part. Mm-hmm. And Liam decided to try and leap. Oh yeah, you were leaping as well, <laughs> and it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, to a degree, but it's, it's one of them again because because it tracks you in a certain thing. If it if it sort of mistracks you in the last moment, yeah, it will think you've gone the opposite way. Yeah. So the few times you went to throw yourself towards like up and to the right, yeah. it would track you, uh, it would track the, the controls getting mixed up with the lights yeah. and think you'd pull the opposite way. And, and shoot you down. Fly down to the ground. <laughs> but if you can get, if you can master that section yeah. of leaping, then I can imagine you're going to get a lot, lot further. No, of course, yeah. And the only other thing that really annoyed me was the fucking carnival guy. Oh my Some God. Some of the stuff he says, I'm, I'm still thinking, I will slap you. I will smack that moustache off your face, sir. <laughs> what's, the li- what's the line he says? When, every time you fail in the climbing uh, section bit, he goes... It's not the fall that's the worst part. It's the embarrassment. Yeah, you're like, and you're like, <laughs> like your mum's an embarrassment. <laughs> no, you said they're going. Hey, it's so it's fucking so true. true. <laughs> now there was another. There was another game, uh, and this is another gripe I have with it again. With like, I'm not sure this was actually made for PSVR in mind or mm-hmm. ported over like most other uh, uh, VR games are. And another one on this list we'll talk about that was ported very poorly. I might add. Mm-hmm. Um, it, but like, there's one specific game. In, in the uh, the space section, where yeah. you play mini golf, basically. Oh, oh, my God. It was the worst one I've ever played. Not only because it was... Well, again, it's the case of light tap, boom! <laughs> but... <laughs> what is it? It's, it's a light tap, boom! <laughs> across the fucking stars. But oh, was, space themed, is it? Yeah, yeah. But, of course, every time you you, you came into the... You came into the, the, the area to hit the ball, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> The ball would be directly below you, yeah. but it'd be you'd be facing the way you need to hit. So you'd have to turn yourself to then hit the ball, and you'd do that every time. So you'd fucking you'd lose complete orientation of where you were. Damn. More often than not, I was taking the headset off to look at where the camera is and be like, okay, this is forward. <laughs> every time, <laughs> all my little sound effects today. Why not? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Fuck installing sound effects, just have James. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Who needs sound effects when you got my mouth? <laughs> hey. but I we'll th- talk about that I, later. I, I think the the main point here is uh, at a three pound price point, you can't go wrong with this game. Nah, it was posted originally for fifteen, the base game. Really? Um, and it only features twelve games, I believe, and the expansion adds an extra six. Um, I didn't see the. Price of the, the base price of the expansion, but mm. as I say, the base game itself was like 15, 16 quid. I mean, for three quid, you can't go wrong. Hmm. For three pounds, you that, cannot go wrong. That's literally the crux of my argument with this game is a case of if you've got VR and you've got a bit of cash to spare, and again, it's only three quid. That's what I mean. It's not like you're breaking the bank. No, this isn't This isn't another along together situation where you think it's going to be great. You pay, even on a budget price, you think it's going to be great, and it's shit. Yeah. So. Uh, but also speaking of VR games on a budget price, we have to talk about 18 Floors. Mate. Now, this one, n- neither, I hadn't played before. Th- as soon as we, this game was installed, we played it together. Yeah, this game was installed and we played it together. And by play it together, they, you didn't know whether it was a horror game or nope. not. So, you know. <laughs> okay, well, to be Let's fair. get the guinea pig in. Yeah, you are our VR horror guinea pig. You yeah. should know this by now. The... The, the the image on the store page is a bit misleading because it, it's all like droopy and dark and esque and there's like a, a picture of some woman who's crying blood and you're thinking, is it a horror game? And it says escape room game. Like, okay, so it's a escape room. Like, what, if you don't complete a certain amount of time, you're going to get the shits put up yeah, mm-hmm. Something like that. Which we discovered that isn't the case. It's just really fucking frustrating. It's not even that. No, it's, it's frustration. It's also very 
ominous. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yeah, I'd say ominous, yeah. It's got like that proper, you got to keep looking over your shoulder even though nothing's there. Because, it's because of all the sound effects, though. You're still going... Uh... Yeah. More often than not, you're looking behind you like, oh shit. <laughs> Every time, boof, okay. To be fair, the only, the only one moment of horror came quite predictably, I'd say. Not the picture. Yeah, the picture. There was, mm. I mean, when this game came out July last year, but it's only the first level we're talking about because that's as far as we can fucking get. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, full disclosure, we actually got a little bit stuck and like tried to look up a little bit of a guide for the last couple of puzzles on the thing, which still didn't help. Still didn't help at all. I mean, we managed to do it in the end, but it was just yeah. It, 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 no guide was very helpful for us. No. And the worst part was everyone was saying, "Oh man, how hard is level two? I cannot get past level two. And we're just like. We can't do level we can't, one. We can't even do level one. <laughs> we are so fucked. There's 18. There's 18 of these things and we can't get past one. Um, but no, I, I I did enjoy it. It was just very frustrating. Mechanically wise, I'd say it looked quite rough graphically. Do you not reckon? Around the edges. It, yeah. looked, it looked very bare. The best thing, the best way I mean, it. maybe that's what they were going for. I don't know. Mm. Maybe that's the whole... like. Cause I guess if it was all nice and polished, I don't think it would have been as... It wouldn't have had that much of a fucking atmosphere to it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So maybe having that bit of a rough esque feel to it with the sounds that were playing in the background, maybe that was what they were trying to play for. To be fair, I reckon that sort of, um, I reckon that whole demeanor, the whole look of the thing is quite. It, it helps with that kind of game because of such some like the time, the, the very small clues you have to find. Yeah, yeah. It helped. Though obviously those bits were in great focus. Whereas the rest of it was, again, quite rough. But it also, it highlighted that you needed to look at. Yeah. So, I look forward to carrying on with it at some point. I do. <laughs> you look forward to it, you do? I really do. You really do? Okay. Um, Only because it's one of them. I, I'm a, I love big puzzle games, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, see what goes, see what happens. Aye. And then, and then the last thing that you and I both played, which, as I say, you, know, you want to talk about very much, is the Resident Evil 2 demo. The, the specifically the one shot demo that was available from the eleventh of January, I believe. Yep. I don't know. I don't know if it's limited time in order to download it. I, I don't know on that score, but I know that if you download it once, you only get thirty minutes to play. Yeah, you get thirty minutes. End get, of. Yeah, and and that and it 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 was quite confusing at first because I thought going into it that it was like thirty minutes each time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it was only when you came along and tried it yourself that I realised. Oh no, wait. Excuse me, the time remaining over from how and I played it yeah. is how long you had to play it. Yeah, and we didn't get very far. No, actually, no, to be fair, I, I'd, I'd, knowing how the entire thing lays out, I put it into like three three quadrants in like right. three acts. You got to the end of act two, I'd say. Fair enough. You only had one more bit to do. Well, okay, no, but yeah, it's in four. It's in four acts. You got to halfway through the, the demo, I'd say, because you've got to get to another space and then come back, and that's the end. Oh, fair enough. Um, Now... I was excited for this game anyway. I know you were. Yeah. I didn't have any plans to pick it up or pre-order or anything like that because Kingdom Hearts is coming out like four days later. Yeah. But after four. finishing... <laughs> but, there is a bot coming. After finishing that demo, I did go and pre-order a copy. <laughs> because it, it actually is really good. You can't go wrong with the Resident Evil. Of- yeah, I was going to say, yeah, but watch what you say in there. <laughs> Resident Evil 4 didn't happen. Four, I don't know, four was great. Five was meh, six was zero. It's that, it's that section of Resident Evil's that... Are we still thinking about the same games? Okay, I'm talking about Chris Redfield punching a boulder. That's what I'm saying, it was okay. Four was great. <laughs> Fuck him. Five, no, five is Chris Redfield. Four is Leon Kennedy. When you go to like Spain or whatever, you go to rescue Ashley. Yeah. The only thing yeah, about that was right over was Ashley. Yeah. Because she was fucking useless. She was useless until you got, until you... Uh, I think if you finished it in a certain way, she got a suit of armor. Yeah, she did, yeah. Which and made then, her impossible to pick up. Mm-hmm. You couldn't move. accidentally shoot her as well, which I did a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, once you bit the bullet mm-hmm. and put up with the fucking game and got back to it, and once you played it again with the suit of armor, yeah. four was amazing. Oh, I'm yeah. always thinking of the wrong fucking ones. Five with Chris Redfield. Yeah, Chris, four, four is Leon, five is Chris Redfield and Sheva. Which is just completely... It's... Okay, 6 was worse, though. You reckon? I... Yeah, I do. I enjoyed 6 a lot more than 5. I enjoyed 6's story overall. No, I liked it all overall. Really? Completely, yeah. I don't know, I just thought... It, well, I thought for one thing it was a bit ridiculous in places. Yeah, but if you noticed, again, which character was it always ridiculous on? Yeah, it was, it was Chris. Yeah. There's n- it's like, apart from 7, 
with the DLC, I think Chris has just got a bad rap. Mm. Yeah, that's why they had to remake him. Exactly. And he's he's toned down on the steroids a little bit. <laughs> yeah, he's not he's not a raid he's not a roid monster no more, you know what I mean? Although to be fair, he does still punch the big, massive, huge glob monster things. Yeah. It's just not a bowler anymore. Yeah. Uh, but no, back to the back to the demo. Um I think I enjoyed it most because the zombies were really difficult. If that makes sense. I do what I liked about it this time is they were real zombies. Yeah. They weren't no fucking bio modified war machines. Although that is is still in there at one point. You know, um, have you played the original game? Or not? Yeah, I know. I mean, I haven't, but I know what happens in it. Um, you've got Professor Birkin in the underground labs. He's yeah. all like, you know, the big arm. Yeah, but that's what I mean. That's okay. Apart from the bosses and the liquors, liquors are in it too. I like the liquors. To be fair, it, the bit you got, the bit you couldn't get to because of the, the time limit, you did see a liquor. You didn't fight it, it just ran across the window and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, but see, that's, what, that's, my, that's my point I'm trying to get to. The first, the first two games, they were real zombies mm-hmm. and the only real bio war machines yeah. were the bosses. And that's what made playing Resident Evil amazing. Because mm-hmm. you had all these like actual zombies and then you knew you were hitting a boss when you seen this fucking big massive morphin thing happen. You were like, yeah. this is so awesome, I've just shit my pants. And now I'm going to die. <laughs> I can die happy, you know what I mean? Do you know what was good though? Uh, you didn't get to see it until you completed the demo. Um, I think my time was something like 17 minutes, I believe. Mm. I can't remember. Uh, but there's a little trailer that shows off obviously the game itself. Yeah. And at the end of the trailer, the show... Remember, um, there was that one part in the game where you completed it in a certain time, you got to play as Hunk. Yeah. That's going to be in the game. And Tofu is going to be in it as well. Aww. The fucking Tofu character, who you only have a knife, that's in it as well. Um, <laughs> I know, completely ridiculous, isn't it? I love this game already. I know, it's going to be pretty This good. could be a burning bag of shit, and I'm still going to love it now. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's not long out now, it's next Friday. It comes out on the 25th, which is next Friday, and then Kingdom Hearts comes out on the... Tuesday, 29th. So I've got four days to complete this game. You ain't completing that in four days. Fucking watch me. I am telling you. I'm, it's, well, to be fair, it's a weekend. I'm not doing anything that weekend. So I'm just going to be fucking plowing through it. Because as soon as Kingdom Hearts comes through my door, I'm just... Nothing else matters. Because nothing, nothing else, else matters. matters. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> right, so that's all the stuff that... I'm going to rattle through the whole stuff I've played that quick. Okay. There's not much I want to talk about a lot of it. So... Uh, a few demos, as I say, we played Resident Evil 2 demo, but I also played a demo for Moss, which was a PSVR title. It was a, a, a platformer one. They, they released, um, it was, there was a demo for it as part of the demo collection 2, I believe, the PlayStation VR demo collection 2. Um, and it, I enjoyed it then, and there's a different part of the game you got this time. I still enjoyed it. Mm. It's a game that I did actually want to buy because it was on sale for about £15. But then I only got money the day after, and that was when it was not on sale anymore. Yeah. So I was like, fuck. Another demo I played, which was very strange, for VR again, was called Animal Force. Now... Sounds like a Power Rangers spin-off. Well, to be fair, if you looked at this, this, the page of it, you'd see, you saw the little animal creatures in their various poses. You'd think that. Some um, say. But no, it's a... It's kind of like a strategy game. You... Okay, effectively, there's aliens coming to take humans from the planet, and you have to fight back with animals... You, you you choose your team at the start of each match, which consists... In the demo, I got a panda, who like is just standard fire. Yeah. Uh, a rhino, whose bullets slow down enemies. And then some kind of bird that makes a shield around all you guys. And you can you can pick them up, you can put them wherever you want, you know, move them around the screen. Yeah. If you press the trigger, they stay in that position and just sit there. And it's You know those old Flash games where you'd get like a, a, a trail and something's going on the trail and you build... Forces to stop it, what's come along. Yeah, yeah. It's that. Uh, it's that in 3D with animals. Fair enough. And aliens. Um, that was another game that was on sale, but I didn't... That was very on the fence about getting, and I just decided to not get it because... It was... F- the demo's fun. Don't get me wrong. It's 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 weird, in, but it's interesting. It's fun. But it's also not one that I actually would put money down on. Yeah, yeah that no, makes sense. No, I get it. I get so, it. Um, Still, just kind of... I'm in my head right now, I'm taking... Wild Force's theme song and just <laughs> replacing it with Animal Force. Yeah. No, I get that. Well, to be fair, they had another series of Power Rangers that was very animal-based. Remember Jungle Fury? Yeah, but you know what? I, out, of the, out of all the Power Rangers, I have to go off topic there quick, we'll get back on this. Out of all the Power Rangers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which ones were your favourite? Dino Thunder. Really? Really. 
Time Force. Oh, really? Really. I get that. To be fair, Time Force had like the best overarching story and characters, I reckon. Uh, no, I like the theme song as well. Oh, yeah, and the theme song too. <laughs> There's the best theme song. Go on, I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> I was going to say, the original theme though. It's good. It is amazing. But it's you're saying Time Force is better than that. But I'm saying Time Force is better than that. Fuck. You know they actually rehashed the original theme for like some later series. If you watch, if you watch like Power Rangers Samurai, I think it was. That was basically Go Go Power Rangers Samurai or some shit like that. Oh god. It was just like it's not bastardizing my childhood. No, it's not even that. It's like do you know when I genuinely stopped watching them because I just thought. These are getting really fucking bad now. Mm-hmm. SPD. Really? I liked SPD. I know, I liked SPD. But after that, was that, that, was, that was the last series I ever watched. No, I I, I did like SPD. Um, which came after SPD, you know? Um, I'm sure it was Wild Force. Or no, that, no. Wild Force came way before that. I'm, SPD I'm almost, emergency. <laughs> I'm almost certain that looking up after SPD was Mystic Force. A mystic force. Oh, no, see, I, I knew that once they started bringing wizards and magic into it, I just went, no, I'm out. No, see, I didn't actually mind that series. The series I definitively dropped out on, we got way off tangent here, fuck it, was Overdrive, Operation Overdrive. Remember that one? Yeah, but... I def- that was one I definitely dropped out on. Um, still love Time Force. <laughs> yeah, still Time Force. Okay, but... <laughs> okay, so that's it for the demos that I tried. I played some more of Danganronpa 2. That's a series I've always loved. Um, visual novel, <sighs> crime-solving game with murder and teenagers and stuff. It's great, though, if you're into that sort of thing. You if know. you're into teenagers, murder, and <laughs> crime-solving. Yeah, why not? Yeah, Fuck it. Fuck, of course, why not? Who's not? It's, it's brilliant, though. I've, I've, I bought the third one when it came out brand new. I think it was last January, actually. <laughs> it's still in its fucking wrapping. Because I didn't actually get on to play it until I finished these two games. I never actually fucking finished. Well, I finished them, obviously, but I didn't. Finish some of the PS4 versions, if that makes sense. What game was... Oh, yeah, Evil Within 1. Oh, God. <laughs> I still can't remember that <laughs> light bulb moment for you. Oh, God. Why don't you just watch, why don't you just watch it on YouTube? I could just watch it on YouTube. I could just, I could just watch it on YouTube. Yeah, to be fair, I nearly had that... I nearly made that decision again with another game on this list, but I'll get around to that later. <laughs> now, the next game. Oh, God. This one I'm going to have to talk about a little bit, and this one surprised you when I played it. Mm-hmm. Overwatch. Yeah, it did surprise me. Uh, I've played Overwatch. I've not. You know what? Okay, I'm going to be completely open, balls on the table with this one. Okay. I've never actually given it a chance. Okay. Well, I, I don't know as, how far my recommendation goes because it's a multiplayer game, so... I know, but that's what I mean. It's a, it's a, P, it's a PvP, isn't it? Yeah, you have a team of, I believe, six or five, something like that. Five or six, and you get to choose whoever you want, and then... Obviously, if there's, a, if there's a character already in use, you can't choose that character. Yeah. Um, kind of like it's it's kind of like the new the the way Call of Duty's gone. You get a team of like so many people. You can only if someone picks it before you, you can't use it. Well, when it came out, I think it was very heavily uh, associated with Team Fortress Two. Remember that? I can't say I do. That was another shooting class based P- PvP game. Mm. Um, to be fair, a lot of the modes in it are quite similar as well. Like there's a. a um, um, there's one mode where you have to protect a client, I think they're called, and then like a big limousine fucking thing. Mm. You've got to you've got to defend them while they set off, and you've got to defend them as they move, get to the point, and all this kind of thing. Mm. There's capturing certain mo- capturing certain locations. I think that's just called attacking. I'm not sure. And there's death matches, of course, obviously. See, um, so it's pretty much okay. So my the only real game I can put towards this would be the Call of Duties, which would be. Uh, protecting the client is a new one for me, but I'm gonna protect, I'm just gonna say that'd be more like. You couldn't. There's no real it's, it's thing set, to base that with apart from like capture the flag. It's one. It's similar to capture the flag, but actually, more the, the the attacking one's more similar to capture the flag. I'd say that sounds more like hard point though, because the, the client thing is mm-hmm. more based on like uh, cargo, defend the cargo sort of situation. Nah, yeah, there's nothing really like that in the Call of Duty, but the uh, the other one, the attack, mm-hmm. the 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 things move about the map. Um. Or does it go back to the same spot over and over again? No, when you take one, when you win over one spot, you you have to go to find another. Yeah, see, that sounds more like hard point on the Call of Duties. There is a game similar to that where there's where it's the same base you have to defend, but multiple times. Yeah, that sounds more like capture the flag. It's more like it's like a two out of three situation for that base. Yeah, um, it definitely sounds more like capture the flag. Yeah, but I enjoyed it either way. Um, I mean, I'm not, I know I'll I'll, I'll I'll give it a go. Yeah, you know I'd, I mean? I'd, I'd say give it a go just one. before I can start slagging it off. Yeah, to give to give total context to this, I was debating either buying it pre-owned for mm. at the time 
it was like 16 quid yeah. or pay the extra pound because it was on sale in game yeah it was it was a brand new legendary edition which equates to just having new skins ah oh, fair enough um that was on sale in game for like 18 so it was like eh. and eventually I decided against both of them and then when I traded some old shit in I got the, pre- the pre-owned standard version yeah I've only invested so much time to it really um but I I, th- I think as, as we all know I don't do multiplayer yeah you don't really play the PvP no but this is actually enjoyable if that makes sense yeah like Tony Stark you don't like playing with others exactly I am completely to- I could just shave this now and be Tony Stark why not Although I could also be dead and be Tony Stark. <gasps> we don't know yet. We'll find out. <laughs> dude. I don't know. Not, Fucking dude. We've not got that far yet. We'll find out in the Avengers Endgame. Spoilers. Okay, so the next next bunch of games I'm going to rattle off is just yep. straight finished. Um, Persona 3, Dancing. I finished that. Uh, the only thing I can say about that is that... It's, <laughs> to be fair, the fourth one is going to sound ridiculous. I know how, I know how ridiculous it's going to sound, especially to you. The fourth one's better because the fourth one had a story. It was a completely ridiculous story, but this one is a worse story, if that makes sense. <laughs> the darkness is coming! We've got to save it! With interpretive dance. We must fight back with dancing. <laughs> it just... <laughs> I know, I know, it is completely ridiculous. Oh my god! <laughs> I know, I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> I didn't get around to playing Persona 5, but I've only done Persona 3, and it's... I will say one thing that pissed me off about these games, though. It's totally on the front of the box, PSVR compatible, and I'm thinking, ooh, that sounds interesting, what the fuck can I do with a dancing game in VR? Nothing. You literally watch the character in the distance dancing, or you can change their clothes, you can change the dance moves, and all this kind of bollocks. I'm like, well, this is fucking useless. So you can pretty much just still do what... It's basically... No, because you're not even you're not even making you're not even doing like the normal dance songs, you know, the, the rhythm game. No. You're literally watching a character model in front of you dance or pose or whatever and change the outfits and stuff, and that's it. And I was like, I got the fucking headset out for this. I was fuming. You was what then? I was fuming. Fuming. Dark Siders 2, I finished that. Uh-huh. Finally. That I mark? can now play Dark Siders 3 whenever I can afford that. <laughs> I look forward to that though, although I'm a bit tentative. Because many people have compared it to Dark Souls. I hate Dark Souls. I like Dark like Souls. Like, play-wise. Yeah, but I, I'm going to say I like Dark Souls, but I, I'm, I'm the type of person that also loves Devil May Cry and stuff like that. It's completely different. you played Dark Souls. Yeah, it's... Are we talking about the same... No, it's the same sort of, like, just fucking... Well, no, Dark Souls... It's a grind of a game. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, like, everyone looks at Dark Souls as being like, oh, you've got to properly time your dodges and... And you st- and every hit like like stamina and all this kind of bollocks. Yeah, I mean it's a bit more of a tactical style of game, but it's still it's still hack and slash. Yeah, you're it's right. a hack and slash grind. Mm-hmm. It's enough. just it's a bit more of a tactical hack and slash grind. Yeah, I'll give you that. So, me. I also finished. So, so yeah, I, fuck <laughs> off. I also was given it as a Christmas present and finished in one sitting. Mind. Wow. Yeah, one sitting. Shadow of the Colossus. You know the re- the remake they made last year. Yeah, I'm finished that. I was good. It's good. I mean, if you played the original game on the PS2, you're not gonna find anything new. It's just prettier. Um, some of the boss fights are still a total bitch, but you know it's still a good game. I enjoyed it. And you finished it. Not bitter in the slightest. Yeah, yeah I was debating. Not. I was debating going back to like New Game Plus thing and getting more items and increasing your stamina bar, but I just thought eh, I can't be asked. <laughs> Maybe later. I do it in the A VR game I got uh, on sale again and, and, and played was Just In Time Incorporated. No. Uh, now the premise is quite interesting. You basically play as uh, uh, you play you play as an agent for the Shield. No, for Just In Time. It's a, it's a, like an insurance company yeah. that deals with people who are about to die, um, and you have to go save them. Just you're, in you're time. Ta- exactly, Just In Time. You're a time traveler in essence. You have these gloves that can. Well, essentially stop anything. You can stop moving bullets, for instance, and you can redirect them and shoot them at people, which is brilliant. Um, and every time you go into a level, it just, time is completely slowed down. You can move as freely as you like. <coughs> Excuse me, but some of the levels are, like, ridiculous. And the funniest part was, towards the end of the game, some of the levels were based off of popular films, like The Crows. I had to, I had to save six people um, while they... Um, while well, they got to a safe zone no. while well, there's crows flying attacking from everywhere I fucking lost on that level so many times because you, you, to be fair you get like so many items to use you get like um, I was given like a, a fucking fire extinguisher that would freeze the crows and I could smack them 
I, could, I got a wrench to just casually smack them. Just, just casually. I got a Gatling gun that I had to crank myself. One of the old school Gatling guns? Yeah. Wow. It took me like seven attempts to fucking finish it. Nightmare. <laughs> and there's another level, I don't want to get too into this because it's not been out for a year. Yeah. There's another level where it's basically a Matrix parody. I must play this. It was pretty, it was pretty good, but then the worst part was, at the end of this parody, Agent Smith, well, Agent Smith, yeah. in quotation marks, pops in. And obviously he's not in slow motion, whereas you, everything else is. Yeah. So you're, you're having to think in normal time, if that makes sense. That's a fucking nightmare. Um, you know, just casually like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to go and get something to eat. <laughs> like one of them type of things you've yeah. actually got to think. Actually got to think. And fucking teleport everywhere. It's, it was, it's good though, I enjoyed it. Some of the levels are quite ridiculous. You have to save, you have to save this elderly couple, yeah. this man, this woman, because they're both they're both attempting to be murdered one's about to be run over yeah. and the woman's going to get shot from the guy in the back of the truck yeah. you have to teleport over this nearby clown steal some of his balloons to attach to the old man so he flies out the way of the truck and then catch the bullet that's coming from the other guy in the back of the truck to redirect back at him to save the old lady <laughs> and it's like this is incredible <laughs> I must play this game it's really funny oh god but, oh, I hate to say this, mate. I really hate to say this, but I did play one VR game that I fucking hated. Do you know which one I'm talking about? I'll give you a hint because you warned me against this game when I got it. Go on. Rick and Morty. I did warn you. You did warn me against it. But you know what? I thought, oh, it's Rick and Morty. I'll give it a go. And it's fucking awful. Told you. Genuinely fucking awful. Nobody listens to Liam. No, we don't. But it's not even the fact that it, like, it's boring and the, sometimes the puzzles, are, the puzzles go from... Stupid easy to... Ridiculously to hard. What the fuck am I doing? No, it's not even that. It was the whole fucking... If you've got... If you want to... Say, for instance, you want to pick something off the floor, you've got to readjust your camera and everything. Yeah. It's very poorly optimised. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, obviously, it comes from, like, Oculus and Vive and stuff, which has a... It doesn't need a camera. You can no. literally do whatever the fuck you want in that space. No. So, you know, bending down to pick something up, it's easy. Reaching up to get something on the shelf. Easy. Piece of piss. When you're on a PS4 with a light tracking system. You can't do that. Exactly. And it's a fucking nightmare. Like, it was the worst part, the worst struggle with that game was actually fighting with the game to beat it. Yeah. And again, actually beating it was a nightmare. So. Mr. Mises, though. You know, you only get to use that like twice as well. And even then, like, again, it's the, it's the carnival games problem again. <laughs> <laughs> again. <laughs> Fucking nightmare. I'm Mr. Mises, look at me. I did like how you got rid of it though by taking your own face off. Yeah. And you saw them and they're like, Whoa, ah, <laughs> it's ridiculous. And the last game I played, and this is actually, I've left the best for last year. Yeah. Because I played a game alongside the missus, yeah. which we both thoroughly fucking enjoyed. I cannot fault it in the slightest. I got it on sale for about 20. I'm pretty sure full price was 30. Even I would have paid full price if I knew what I was getting into. Is it, we're still talking about VR right now. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. Just pl- making sure. Yeah, we are. It's a VR platform that came out in October called Astrobot Rescue Mission. It was it was noted a few times the game awards. It actually won a few, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must won a few awards. See, I want to have a little go more VR games. Yeah, so we'll have to little delve into them if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but after what? Um, it was it started off. Do you remember that Playroom VR thing that you get bundled with the console? Oh yeah, yeah. It started off as a mini game in that, but it was really popular, and people said, "Oh, can you give us more of this?" And so they did. They made a full game with five worlds and five levels, and loads of challenges as well, and. It's just so fucking good. Do you want to know my favourite VR game, though, since we're on this topic about VR? Okay. The teddy bear one. <laughs> oh, my God. So, uh, sneaky bears. Yeah, sneaky bears. <laughs> that was a. Am- I felt like John Wick in that situation. That was fucking hilarious, was, was sneaky bears. You can, like... No, I just enjoyed it for the sheer fact that I could throw a shotgun and catch it with that hand. It was just so... I felt like proper John Wick. I even remember catching it. And because I realised I'd run out of bullets here, I had the shotgun in this hand, right, in the opposite hand. Yeah. And I didn't think to grab another gun out and shoot. Just instinctively, I threw the gun, caused it, and the teddy bear was like... <laughs> in your face. Point blank range, so I just blew this bear away. And I was just like, oh yeah, that just fucking happened. The best part about that was how badass you felt with just, this gun's out, throw it away, yeah. pick a new one up, bang, bang. <laughs> And you can use the gun to throw it at them as well. It was like, oh my god, this game is amazing. The only thing that, like, when are they actually gonna make a John Wick VR game? That would be fucking amazing. To be fair, I think there's actually a VR game set to come out this year that's similar. It's quite. It's supposed to be like quite realistic, like heisty, gunfighty, all this kind of bollocks. That's what I mean. Imagine actually being able to play as 
John Wick. I've not seen the film, so I can't go. Really? No, I still need to see them. I, I will know. not judge you as much as I really want to, but you will have to watch them films. I know, I'll get around to it. But no, Astro Bot. Um, you just don't like Keanu Reeves, do you? I like, Ke- I like Keanu Reeves. No, you don't. We're going to talk about Keanu Reeves later, actually. But you're not going. you don't like him. You I haven't like seen him. The Matrix. You haven't seen John Wick. I've seen him. In, no, not the Matrix. But it doesn't matter. So you, I've seen him in other shit. I saw, like him in, right, I saw him in Speed, and that's it off for now. You saw him in his worst film. <laughs> that fucking bus, though. <laughs> I start, I'm sorry, I just can't fathom it for a second right now. That like, fucking bus. <laughs> Anyway, Liam, Astrobot. Yeah, it's it's really good because there's a lot of interactivity with it as well. <laughs> so the controller it doubles as various gadgets. You get a yeah. shot, you get a, a water gun, you get all these kind of things. It's really good. Astrobot himself is adorable. That's what just, a pure. That, that's fair. I need a guy. <laughs> uh, but there's you, you yourself also have to do things in the game because you're you're tasked with each, in each level to find the missing robots. Yeah, and sometimes they're hidden in certain areas. In fact, at one point in an early level. Um, it was actually just off the side. Yeah. You, were, you were following. You were looking over here because that's where Astro is going with the platform. But if you stop and look to the other side of the room, you'll see a hidden platform that, when you look at it, activates. That makes oh, sense. Fair. And then further down that same level, there's you're supposed to carry on straight forward in this narrow hallway bit. But if you actually look to your left again, you'll notice that the wall can be broken by you. Occasionally, oh. you'll find these little symbols that mean that you, as the player, or rather as the embodiment of the controller whatever yeah, yeah. has to physically headbutt something in the game that is fucking amazing it is really cool yeah I want to play this game there's even uh, enemies that attack using footballs and they'll they'll hit the ball at you and you're, you have to header it back to them <laughs> and just keep doing that until the robot fucking you know dies it is actually so good I'd recommend it hide anyone this is the game I would definitively say you've got a VR headset get it get it not sneaky bear for me get it well, it's always going to be sneaky bit. Resident Evil 7, though. Resident Evil 7 was good. I don't think I'm it. waiting for a button, yeah. Yeah, the, the only button I'm going to give it is if you're going to play it, I don't suggest playing it with the control, with the... With standard. Yeah. Well, you mean it's better in VR? No, it's better with the VR, but... I don't like... When I mean it's best in VR, I like the fact that it's there, you know what I mean? You're actually within the game. Yeah. The only thing I didn't like was the whole stumps. Oh, you you mean you thought that it'd be better if you could physically interact with things? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I'm saying. To a certain degree, because... Well, A, I, I don't agree because obviously it's not... It wasn't it made for VR, it was just... No, it, was it wasn't made, made for VR, it was just... It was it was sort of compatibilised for VR. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know the only reason I don't the reason I disagree is because when you use the VR headset, aiming is so much easier. Yeah. It's so much fucking easier. I mean, it took me a while to realise what the fuck, how to use the VR headset aiming system, but yeah. Yeah. It, it was good. Yeah, it was. It's good. Right then. Moving on now. That's all the games we played. Yep, moving along. So, lot. film news. We have a hefty bunch of film news here to go through. Quite lengthy as well. Let's do it. Hefty and lengthy, Liam. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. This isn't the podcast. Oh yeah, that's later, isn't it? Okay. <clears throat> right, first up then, news stories for films. So, Avengers Endgame, the marketing is obviously going to start properly, properly soon after yeah. Captain Marvel comes out. But, the marketing we're getting for Avengers Endgame is going to be very, very, very sparse. What do you mean? They're just trying to save save all the big shebangs. Like, see- for the film. Yeah. So, like, like when you think about the Infinity War trailer, it's used bits that, when you watch the whole film, it's used bits from across the entire film. Yeah. When it comes to Endgame... They're only going to show footage from the first 15 minutes of the film. Fuck. That's it. Nothing more than that. Fuck. I know. Can we just please, and this is the thing I'm hoping for, right? Can we just please hope that that's how trailers go back to being? I'd love that. Because think about trailers back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. How scarce they were, you know what I mean? It was like, one man and a fella, run, the main character, run in a room. Be like, save the, saves his family. Then you'd get like a shot of his kid tied up somewhere. Yeah. That's all you need to know. That like just that's all you need to know about the story. But that was it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. But now we're getting fucking trailers that last four or five minutes and actually show off crucial plot points. Yeah, so, like, I, like I'm still mad at Civil War when it showed me Spider Man. Yeah, I didn't want to see Spider Man until the fucking film came out. Yeah, and then there it was. Oops, got a lot of headache, crazy. That's just, no Spider Man rage. It was. I legit. You can ask my parents. Like back in the day, as soon as that trailer went live, I was sat in my room. All you heard was me shout. 
No! For fuck's Fuck sake! sake! Exactly. Yeah. It's it's a fact. Fact! It was like, I was kind of pissed off that we seen Ant-Man knowing... Uh, trying to piss me off, though. Which, what, in the Endgame trailer? No. Oh, okay. When? When fucking Iron Man and Captain America fight at the end of the film. What, in Civil War? That's the fucking one I was thinking of. I hated the fact that we seen him in it because I wasn't expecting Ant Man to be in that film. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, like I was expecting it. Like he was in the comics, I get that, but I wasn't expecting to see him in the film. Yeah. And then he was there, and I seen him in the trailer. I was like, well, that's just fucking ruined a big fucking part of it for me. Mm. I know. But no, one of them. I'm not getting bitter. No, not bitter at all. Not bitter at all. Right. <laughs> Keeping with Marvel for a second though, um, we know Disney Plus is supposed to be coming out this year, I believe, you know, Disney streaming service. Yeah. Uh, the Vision and Scarlet Witch TV series they're going to have on there has a showrunner. Mm-hmm. Someone's actually going to be working on the project. So according to The Hollywood Reporter, Jack Schaefer, I think that's how you pronounce the name, who is one of the co-writers of Captain Marvel, okay. is going to be the showrunner on Scarlet Witch and Vision. Why not? However that's going to be called. Apparently, she's going to write the plot and she's going to be the executive producer throughout the series. Um, who's she's going also, to be playing them? What's that? Do we know who's going to be playing them or is there any hint or anything? Uh, I, no, not just yet, no, but it's it's kind of assumed that it's going to be Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen you know, the, from the films, but we'll find out that, obviously, when it gets close to the point. Yeah. She's also actually, Jack, she's actually writing the Soul Black Widow film whenever that happens. That would be actually, I would actually really enjoy it. Are we going to, is, but here's the thing, mm-hmm. is it going to be an origin story? I have absolutely no idea. All I know is that... Would you enjoy it being an... Or, or, <laughs> well, we, know, we only know so much about our origins because of... Um, because of... Which was it? Oh, Age of Ultron. Yeah. No one had the, the, the flashback yeah, memory yeah, yeah, fuckery that. scenes. That's how you first the official title. Memory fuckery scenes. <laughs> um, well, but, that's what I mean, but even just that small... Yeah, that small like, snippet. That that was enough for me to go. I would love to see an origin story on that. Yeah, it could be really, it could be really good if it was done right. If it's on me. If it's like a spy thriller. Yeah, I that's think. what I'm saying. But still have its Marvel. Yeah, and Marvel links. Little, Marvel, Marvel touch. Little Marvel touch to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That sounded worse than it was meant to. I get what you're saying. It sounds okay. like a fucking yeah. court case. <laughs> Marvel little touch. Marvel touched me. Show me on the doll when Marvel touched you. Here, right in my fields. Here, here. <laughs> a little bit over here. <laughs> Keeping with Marvel though, or rather, it Marvel's future. Yeah. Um, doesn't look good. No, it's not. That it doesn't look good, Liam. It looks ridiculous, frankly. Um, I don't really know how to put this. It's not. It's sort of a rumor flying around about who's gonna be Wolverine in the future. Um. um I thought Tom Hardy got the... No, that was that was a, a fan casting for Tom Hardy. No, I mean, uh, fair enough. No, I just but thought that had been the, the most the, sensible answer. The full story is this person has was actually considered to play Wolverine originally back in the day, and they've been questioned about it again, you know, with the, the, the looming Fox acquisition yeah. to be Wolverine, like, for the MCU. Try and take a guess who you think it is. Well, it's not Sharon Tatum, because he's going to be doing Gambit. Yeah, for now. Until that film gets cancelled. Get, or pushed back again. Yeah. I, I guarantee this is not someone you think of as Wolverine. I'm, I'm actually going to wait for you to give me an answer on this one because it's fucking hilarious. You're never going to get it. If I had to cast someone as Wolverine, it'd have to be someone with a... F- not fucking tank looking like. Yeah. But, you know, someone who's a bit fucking... He's ripped. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Bradley Cooper? Nope. Go Look, on. He's, he's already in MC, isn't he? He's Rocket. Uh, yeah. yeah, no. Um, it's Keanu Reeves. I'm not. I was as shocked as you were to find out about this. Apparently, back in the original X Men days, he was going to play Wolverine. He was considered for Wolverine. And I'm looking, going, really, <laughs> really. I mean, I can. All right, fair enough. I can see it. I can see it for the fighting ability. It wasn't even that. It's just because he was a big name at the time. You know, because it was just after Just Matrix, after the Matrix and that. Just like finished wrapping up. Can we just stop that a second as well? You know the Matrix? Yeah. Do you know who was originally meant to play? Neo. Go on. I said Neo. Yeah, let's put it there. It, it is Neo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. I thought I thought it wrong. But do you know who was originally meant to play him? Go on. Will Smith. Huh. Do you know why he turned it down? Why? To start in the biographic version of Muhammad Ali's life. Oh yeah, that one. Remember that film that crashed and burned? Ali. It wasn't, oh, it was just called Ali, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just called Ali. <laughs> oh God. That film, that's just when... <laughs> yeah. 
No, I never saw that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 He turned it down and like he turned around. You're like, oh, uh, shit. Hey, Keanu. Yeah. You you want you want to do some acting? <laughs> you want to do some acting, Keanu? <laughs> yeah, I can't picture him as Wolverine. Can you? I really can't. I can. I can for the simple fact is I've seen how like is it the stuff how he actually fights and all that. Yeah. Because oh, if you watch it, if you actually do eventually get round to watching the Matrix, I will watch the Matrix at some point. And get round to watching John Wick. I will get round to watching John Wick at some point. <laughs> All of them fight scenes mm. are him. Oh, really? He naturally, he, he trains. Uh, Keanu Reeves uh, stars, when he does the fucking, his actual fight, and he fights in a Krav Maga, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Thai boxing, mm-hmm. uh, traditional Kung Fu, because that's the whole joke in, yeah. in The Matrix. It's like, I know Kung Fu. He actually does know Kong Fu. Yeah. It's, he, he bases his style on uh, his, his fight style and Kung Fu is the Tiger style mm-hmm. which is a lot more aggressive he hands are up and it's just, that's mm-hmm. going way into it but no I can actually see him playing Wolverine for that reason alone his mm-hmm. fighting ability is it's actually pretty good yeah. I don't know I just I, I mean obviously he could do it getting a bit bulkier like, but that's about yeah. it it's going to be one of them kind of roles where it's just like in, in your head you, in my head I can't see it but it could be one that, that you know, we actually as well. Yeah. But, but it's one of them as well. We can't... You, The way I look at it is, are you, you can't see it because you're used to seeing... Him as other things. Him? No, not even that. You, you're not used to seeing Wolverine played by anyone else but Hugh yeah. Jackman. Okay, yeah, I'll give you that one. You know what I mean? It's like, for instance... Have you ever seen the film The Crow? No. Right, The Crow was, a, was originally for Brandon Lee, mm-hmm. which is the son of Bruce Lee. Yeah. Uh, obviously, sadly, on set he got shot and killed on the set. Oh yeah, you told me a story before, yeah. Yeah. Actually. Well, the person that was meant to play him, who was meant to play the crow again, mm-hmm. was originally Bradley Cooper. Okay. Which you could see it. He's meant to. He's meant to be this skinny rocker, plays guitar in a rock band type of fucking look to him. You know what I mean? Mm. And you can see Bradley Cooper doing that. They've now decided to get written. Bradley Cooper's decided after fucking. Umpteen years of yeah, mm, maybe we don't yeah. know if we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing it. He's gone fuck. I can't be asked with it no more. Mm-hmm. He's dropped it. <laughs> oh god, here we go. Here we go. Who do you think they'd give the role to? Not a fucking clue. The one person I can't stand more than anyone else no, in films. Like Momoa. Jason Momoa. I mean, he's got the look, the long hair at least. Yeah, no. he's meant to be a skinny. He's just meant to be this skinny little. I don't know. I really don't know. Do you know what will piss me off more than anything else, though? Okay. If he does a good job at it. Yeah, I can see that being something that you'd hate. That that will fucking ache me more than anything else in this world. Mm-hmm. Is if he does a good job at it, because I will want to hate him. But you can't. But I can't because it's the crow and the. It's mine and my son's favorite film. Is it bad that I let my two and a half year old watch the crow? I mean, other people would think yes, but <laughs> I just think, fuck it. <laughs> I'm getting them into comic books early. Exactly, why not? <laughs> oh, speaking of comic books, though, we have to talk about how they just released the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer yesterday. Yeah? Yeah, have you not seen it? No? I haven't seen it yet, no. Oh, fair enough. Well, in that case, I will get it for you right now. <laughs> aye, uh, aye. Aye, aye. So yeah, it came out yesterday. It's been teased for a while. It's been rumored for a while. Yeah. And it obviously, is, it's the first film in the MCU to take place after Avengers Endgame. Mm-hmm. Now... So we know Spider-Man's back then. Yes, and that's that's my main gripe with it, but I'll, I will go into that after we've watched the trailer together now. Because I, I feel they should not have shown this off until after Endgame. But yeah. Is it I'll, just me, though? I'm pretty sure Robert... The, 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 the plays Iron Man. What's his fucking name? Uh, uh, fucking hell. Robert Downey Jr. There we go. I'm pretty sure this is his last... Contracted film. What Endgame? Yeah. Well, it's the same for a lot of the actors. I know that um, Chris Evans and I think Hemsworth as well. There, it's their last film too. That's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be losing a lot of the original guys. I'm <laughs> just, you know, am I the only one that's a little bit worried? <laughs> no, I, I understand your, your trepidations. You know, it could be like it, there's one or two ways this is going up because it is the end of their contracts. Mm-hmm. So they can go one or two ways with to one or two ways with this. Yeah, we know how Iron Man ends up in the in the comic books. 
You want an alcoholic? I mean, well, the whole helmet situation. Oh, and I, I don't know if that will happen in Endgame, game though. It's a bit too violent. It might not happen. No, but I'm saying, like, we know what happens to him there. Yeah. He dies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm just hoping, like, they don't die. I hope they have, like, a happy ending. Like, they all retire happily ever after. I guess we'll find out on April 27th. But for you right now, we're going to watch the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer. Okay, so we just watched the Far From Home trailer. That's your first time watching it, Liam. What do you think? I absolutely adored it. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. I think the worst part about this is for me that I actually really enjoyed that. But I'll tell you now why we're set by it. We shouldn't have released it until after Endgame. We should have. We shouldn't have because now we know Nick... We know Nick Fury yeah. and Spider-Man are both going to live. Are going to be fine. I mean, to be fair, we can't have to shoot anyway, but it was nice to go into it thinking like... Maybe, maybe, maybe not. not, maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I like the fact, that, like I said, like I brought up before, it's the whole like Iron Man's last film, Chris mm-hmm. Evans' last film, yeah. Thor's last film. We don't know what's gonna actually happen to them now. Exactly. You know what I mean? And as much as I will, I don't give a shit. I'm 23. I will cry if they die. <laughs> Mate, I cry when Spider Man got dusted, dusted. No, no, no. Do not go there. <laughs> That's, That's right. Shit. I'm poking that fucking bear. Remember when Spider Man got dusted? That's what I mean. It was just, it was the whole scene. Yep. That whole fucking scene. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's not just that, you know, the deeper meaning behind the whole scene. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. He sees him like a father. Yeah, and, but it's like Tony, it's like Tony actually can't even protect Spider Man and mm-hmm. what's her name's fucking up the duff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he feels like he's not going to be able to be a father. He's not going to be able to be a, prof- a father mm-hmm. if he can't even protect Spider-Man. Now, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, mate, that scene gets me every time. No. I know. <laughs> Before we go on to the next uh, story, though, there is one thing <sighs> that, that fans have already noticed about that trailer that what? they believe is going to spoil Endgame. Well, Now, again, this is something that fans have just noticed out of the blue. Yeah. It may be true, maybe not. The big check that Happy walked in with, yeah. it was signed by Pepper, not Tony. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So people are thinking, is that a hint towards Endgame? Which, if that's the case, Marvel done fucked up real bad. Yeah. So let's let's wait for April to find out that one. For can we just sit? Can we just think about this for a minute? When Iron Man was the first film to start the MCU off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Think about when that came out. It's like two thousand six, wasn't it? 2008, 2007, one of those. It was like 2007, I think. Yeah. I think. Bear that in mind, it means you were 11. I know. We have grown up we have, we watching have these films. actually grown up alongside Marvel Studios. Exactly. We've grown up watching these films, and oh my fucking God, it's coming to an end. Well, the big, fir- the first big story. Gosh, the first there, yeah. story arc, yeah. The thing I'm looking forward to most is, obviously, we're getting the scrolls in Captain Marvel. Mm. I'm looking forward to it. They do a Secret Invasion story because that'd be fucking brilliant. That'd be fucking amazing. Have you read Secret Invasion? I've heard a good I haven't read it myself, though, personally. I've actually got a copy at my parents' house, so I don't see it. It's really good. Yeah. Really good. It's meant to be absolutely amazing. But you know what? I would absolutely love to see, but you will never get it. The zombie world. No zombie marvels. Well, apparently there's something zombie, zombie-like in Far From Home. That was a story that got lost amongst the the mess, like towards, like over the last few weeks. Was that hints? There was there was hints of Marvel zombies in Far From Home, in like a bit of a hallucination scene. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, no, that I reckon that a, a full-fledged series, mm-hmm. movie series, or a spin-off film. Or, yeah, but I mean, like, even if if, if they give it a full-fledged. Marvel studio fucking movie set up. Yeah. I think that'd be amazing. Oh, yeah. I think it'd be brilliant. I mean, you'd have to crank the fucking age limit right up, though. Oh, yeah, definitively you, 18. You could not have, like, a 12A zombie movie. No, because they fucking eat each other. Exactly. Oh. I mean... I think that's something that they'd have to do... That they could only do once the Fox acquisition's done, because Galactus plays a big part in that. Yeah. So... But Mysterio... And the Fantastic Four as well. Mysterio playing a good guy. I know. I'm very... I'm very curious to see how it goes with that. I want to see where he, t- where he finally just... Yeah. You know what I mean? My, my guess, my um, my thinking behind all this is that he's going to be the one orchestrating all this to make him look like a hero. That makes sense. Because Quentin Beck's just an actor. So, that's why. That's, that's my, like, two cents on what this film plot's going to be. Whether in Europe, Quentin Beck... Uh, 
Jake Gyllenhaal's character yeah. Mysterio. He's going to be the one who's orchestrating all these attacks from what looks like Hydra Man, Molten Man, and I think Sandman? I'm not sure about that. Oh, it didn't look like Sandman. Well, no, but there was three big they were monsters, Earth, They were Earth creatures. Like. Yeah, because we, we def- Hydra Man was definitely there in Venice. Yeah. That big fire-looking one could be Molten Man. But then Possibly. there was that big stone one, and I can't think of anyone but Sandman. So... Mm, I know what you mean. I don't know. We'll figure out. We'll Do you know what I'd love to see, though? What? Is... Okay, it's going to sound stupid and it might never happen and all stuff like that, but what I, self-personally, what I'd love to see mm-hmm. is Venom get put into the MCU. I know he's Sony and I know all that, but I'm just saying well, I would adore we'll, to see that. We may, we may see that one day, but obviously until that happens... I know, but just think know. about that. Can you imagine a story between actual Spider-Man... Yeah, and Venom. Tom Holland... And Venom. Tom Hardy. With Tom Hardy. I really enjoyed that film, actually. I don't care. I still because. haven't seen it. I need, I need to. Well, you know what? We're getting a copy of it next month, so you can watch it then. Good. It comes out on the 4th, I believe. See, that's what I mean. I just literally just missed it. Mm-hmm. Because that was obviously... Okay. Next story, we're going to talk about Spider-Man to Spider-Verse, because apparently Sony are considering making a TV series based off of it. Or rather, spin-off animated shorts and series and stuff. Fair enough. Uh, I've seen Into the Spider-Verse and I think it was actually really good. Especially the animation style was brilliant. Um, the story itself I enjoyed. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the music. Uh, it was fucking funny in places as well. So again, it's something they're, they're considering to make. They've wanted to make animated series for a while, have Sony. Yeah. And this is one of their considerations. Especially one of them as well is going to be animated shorts featuring Spider-Ham. Do you know the only problem if it did, when they do make these? What? They will never be on Netflix. No, probably not. No, for the, no they won't because Sony... When Britain, when Britain got the got when England got Netflix, mm. Sony didn't want to sign on with England. Oh really? So you will never see. Have you noticed? You'll never see a Sony movie I on Netflix. I haven't noticed that actually. No. Honestly, you will never see a Sony movie on Netflix. I'm gonna, at all. That. I'm gonna have to look into that now. We go in there. I'm telling you. Uh, but I mean, apart from the Sony series, there's already a sequel and it's been off film in the works. So, I mean, to be fair, Sp- Into the Spider Verse made so much fucking money. It came out like middle of December. It won a few awards, like, straight off the bat, and made so much fucking money. It, it, it is good. Do you know what I love as well about the stuff? Like, I haven't seen it yet, but you know what I actually love about it more than anything else? Go on. It's the first film I haven't, I've seen, that I've seen, that the main Spider-Man's not Peter Parker. Oh, yeah, Miles. Yeah, well, he Miles, was, Miles. He, he was quite big in the cartoon shows. He made, he made quite a character in that. Yeah. And people, people still speculate there could be a live-action Miles Morales in the MCU, because... Who would you put? Who would you cast? Right now, here and now, who would you cast? I don't know. I really don't know because they had Donald Glover voice Spider-Man in the cartoon. When, mm. when Miles appeared in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoons, it was Donald Glover from Community. Mm. Um, he was in Spider-Man Homecoming, if you remember. Yeah. As the guy who was selling weapons or was trying to buy weapons. You know when Peter like webbed into the back of the car? Yeah. That's Donald Glover. Yeah. He, he's supposed to be playing um, Uncle Aaron, Miles' uncle, mm. also known as the Prowler. Mm. Um I don't know. I don't know who I cast it as. Do you know who I would... As, I know, you're probably going to hate me for saying this. Go on. Michael B. Jordan. You can't, though. I know. But I'm just saying. The only th- person I could think of, if they were a bit older, would be the kid from Stranger Things. Mm. I don't know. I like him. Mm. I, li- I think he has that kind of comedic timing. But I just think he needs to be a bit older first. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying, but... Mm. I, don't I don't know. As long as it's not Jaden Smith. Yeah. That's all that matters. You're getting this? You're getting all this? Yeah. So, Punisher Season 2 is coming out, as we know. Uh, and the release date has been revealed. The release date for Season 2 of Punisher, which I know you're looking forward to, is the 18th of January. That's two days away. That is this Friday. Although, this is the second and probably likely last season of the Punisher. No, nah, I can't see it. Well, everything else has been cancelled so far. Yeah, but still, Jessica Jones is still going, isn't she? She's only getting a, second, a third season now. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So yeah, but she's getting. It, it, it'll be a case. Well, the thing about Daredevil, season three came out in October, it got cancelled in November. I I think it'd be stupid for them to cancel the Punisher for the sheer fact of Daredevil was amazing, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm still working my way through. I'm up to the last season at the moment. Good season. Yeah. I'm then moving on to Jessica Jones. I like Jessica Jones. And that's what I mean. I'm going to watch it all the Jessica Jones. I'm actually going to go back and fucking watch Iron Fist. I've, I've, set, I've set myself up to watch season two and. Of that and Luke Cage. That's what I mean. I'm gonna go back and watch them too, just so I can watch them all before watching the uh, the defenders. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. But out of all of them, 
I mean, you've got a complete, you've got your own opinion. That's fine. The Punisher for me has the better story arc. No, I, I, I do agree to a certain degree. My favorite was still Daredevil of them all. Um, I did really like Luke Cage season one, and I really liked Jessica Jones season one because Kilgrave is awesome. Yeah, but when you, you get around to watching Jessica Jones, you will fall in love with David Tennant in a different way. <laughs> no, it really pisses me off more than anything else, though. Go on. And I think you brought this up to me, and I didn't realize it till you said it. Mm-hmm. In the first season, what's oh. the one word Luke Cage can't stand? Oh, the N word. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then in season, season two, two, he's throwing yeah. it round like it means nothing. Yeah, I know. I've, I've seen that a few times. He's throwing it round like it means fuck all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And still makes me laugh, though, you know, when uh, you go to the cut, the cut back, the flashback, mm-hmm. when he first escapes the prison. Yeah. And then he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It shows you... It, it gives it a little hat nod to the original get-up of what he was looking like. Yeah. And <laughs> what he says is, I, was, I, I couldn't run around looking like a runaway slave. <laughs> I was like... But yes, um, Punisher season two. It had a trailer to show off its um, its announcement for season two. It no. showed Frank Castle, obviously Jim, Jim, John Bernthal, and it showed Jigsaw, you know, Billy Russo, the guy whose face he properly fucked up. Whose face isn't so fucked up anymore? I've seen, I've seen, like, well, it's to be fair in the trailer. It's like a, a panning shot constantly around, like it switches between him, it switches between Frank Castle and Jigsaw, like no. spin around like that. His actual face. I'm pretty sure it's just one big scar from like eye to lip. And that's about it. Even though I, I distinctly remember that last scene. He got fucked up. He got no, no. It's not from eye to lip. If I, if you remember that distinctive scene, he, he slams his head into the glass and pushes down, yeah. forces his face down the glass. So that could wouldn't. He would. He, he fucked the entire face up. But he also now, but he now wears a mask instead. That's got all like fractures and stuff. So I'm a bit tentative on that score. No, the reason Jigsaw is Jigsaw is because his face is all fucked his up. His face is fucked up. Mm-hmm. But yes, I need to watch. I need to watch this trailer now. We'll we'll get it up. Um, I'll get it for you in the interval. Okay, we're gonna talk now about Venom because mm. Venom Two is happening. Is it? Yep, <laughs> definitely happening. Although to be fair, with the money it made, yeah, it'd be stupid not to. Yeah, I mean that Venom and Aquaman last year made so much fucking money. I still won't watch Aquaman. I kind of want to watch it, but that's purely... Well, I say I want to watch it. Mrs. wants to watch it, not me. Yeah, we know why your missus wants to watch it. Yeah, we know why it. she wants to watch Jason it. Jason Momoa has got his top off for 90% of the film. Yep. And your missus' biggest crushes... Have long hair and muscles. Long hair and muscles. Can we just list off who those people are? Hemsworth, Momoa... She even like Michael B. Jordan, even though he's not got long hair. But he's black. She likes black men as well. I am none of these things... Black, muscular, long head. Fuck Is it. this why you're growing your hair, James? Maybe. Tell the truth. Maybe. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> yes, Sony is already working on Venom, Venom 2. Uh, according to Variety, they've made negotiations with the writer Kelly Marcel to return to write the second film. All the same cast are going to be there. Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams, um, fucking Woody Harrelson is going to be back as well. And it's not being confirmed as well? What, Woody Harrelson? Yeah. Yes. Mm. He, uh, having seen the film, he is in the film. No, I meant that... They're all back. Yeah. Who he's back. going to be playing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I've, I saw the film. He's definitely in. Uh, she, Kelly will also be the executive producer of the film as well. There is no director yet, though. That's the problem. They don't have a director. We're not getting M. M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, God. Could Please imagine? don't give us M. Night Shyamalan. Could you imagine? Imagine the twist on the end. The symbiote turned out to be his long-lost child. <laughs> <laughs> who got very sick. All them years ago. All those years ago. When, when they had, sent them into space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, God. Moving on. Netflix. Uh, they released that interactive, f- frankly, a phenomenon. That Bandersnatch thing. Have you watched that? No. It's like a Black Mirror movie called Bandersnatch. It's interactive, so you decide how it goes. But it's there's one ending in it that is so fucking secret, no one's got it. Okay, so basically, the Choose Your Own Adventure story. Yeah. In, on Netflix. Interactive. Um... And the the guys who who the guy who directed it, David Slade, there's a secret, there's an ending in there that's so secret that he can't even get to it anymore. Um, okay, so basically the quote goes like this: There are scenes that some people just will never see, and we had to make sure that we were okay with that. We actually shot a scene that we can't access. So, the, according to Netflix, there are five main endings mm-hmm. to the film, if that makes sense. But because of all the small choices people make, 
those five endings each have variations on them, mm. which makes the amount of proper endings infinite. Gone. Essentially, yeah. But there's some in there, or at least there's one or two in there that they know that they know for certain no one has found. Fuck. And frankly, I find that fascinating. Even the people who made it can't get back to that. I think you know you fucked up. Is I think it's you know when you fucked up or when you've created a true choose your own adventure story. Yeah. When there's there's parts in there that no one can get to. Or no I one yet. Them, no one yet. To be fair, this story came out I think mid December. So you know, mid January now. Someone may have found it. Maybe they haven't. I mean, I really want to watch them though. I do want to watch Black Mirror as a series. But I want to watch the original series. Remember when it was on BBC Three? I'm pretty sure it's on Netflix, you know. I want to watch the original series first. The only Black Mirror thing I ever watched was the Christmas special from 2014. And it was actually really fucking good. That's what I mean. I, I, people have bragged on about this, but it's kind of like low-key fire. Does that make sense? No, I get that. I get that. <laughs> okay, next up, Aladdin. The live-action Aladdin film. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I know. We saw images uh, of the cast in the full attire in Entertainment Weekly back in late December, I think it was. And it looked like a fucking pantomime. Yeah, Genie wasn't blue for some reason. I was like, what? Why is Genie not blue? Why is he human? Yeah. <laughs> I genuinely you feel... You can make a race joke there, man. We're not going to. No, we won't. But what makes me laugh is I feel like if we're going to go and watch this film, with the audience are going to be sat there going, oh, yes, he is. You know what I mean? That one guy is about like, fuck you. <laughs> Um, but no, according to Will Smith through social media, he said that yes, he, Genie will be CGI, like throughout the majority of the film. The images we saw of him when he's all like human looking and not blue, um, that was just like a disguise form when he's walking around Agrabah, I assume. Agrabah. Agrabah. Yeah. And the reason the, the photos we saw didn't show him all CGI'd up is because the effects aren't actually done yet. I still want to see at least a cameo, like not a cameo, but at least a nod. To the original. To Robert Williams. Oh, yeah. Well, there'll probably be like a thing at the end saying in memory, I imagine. I would hope so. I mean, you can't make an Aladdin film. I like, hope so. I'm not being funny. Aladdin wouldn't be as... I don't care. Fight me on this. Aladdin wouldn't be as big as it is. Without Robert Williams. Without oh, God, Robert I agree Williams. with you on that one. I, I totally agree with you on that, mate. Like, even the second film where it was just a piece of shit. And the third one. It was through. It was, wasn't there like four where it went straight to DVD and all that. Uh, there was like Jafar's Revenge and there was 40 feet 40 Thieves yeah stuff like that there was like some but no it, what yeah. I'm trying what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is even in the shittest films mm-hmm. that they made yeah it was still watchable because of Robert Williams because of Robert Williams yeah no I get that uh, I, I don't I just know just wonder how they're going to do the nod to him I hope they don't have like a hanging scene I don't know oh god <laughs> I don't know if they'll Actually, think about it. I don't think they'll do like a proper in memory thing of the end because they usually only do that for people who've recently died. Yeah, no. Um, but I don't know. They could do it. There was there was a, there's one of those. There was a in memoriam thing for Stanley at the end of Spider Man. Mm. It was really nice. Um, whether they do it for Rob Williams in that regard, I don't know. Or maybe <laughs> it's gonna sound ridiculous because you know how he did impressions. No. Yeah. Maybe Will Smith Jr. will do an impression of Rob Williams. I mean, it'd been. It'd be interesting. It'd be... You know what? I think it'll be disrespectful. And yeah. I don't care. I think it'll be disrespectful if they don't do some sort of nod to... Oh, because I thought you were going to go the other way then. Like, no, It'd be no. disrespectful if they referenced him in such a way. No, I think it'd just be disrespectful if they don't do some sort of nod to Robin Williams. No, I get that. I mean, they might try and spin it off where it'd be like, well, we didn't want our film to be just like the original to be based all on... I don't care. You can say as much shit as you want. You have to yeah. acknowledge... Robert Williams in that film somehow. Mm-hmm. No, I get that. Okay, moving on. Uh, keep with Netflix though. Stranger Things season three. Still haven't seen it. Really? I'd, I'd, I'd suggest it. I think it's good. Uh, but season three is set to come out this year. It actually has a release date now. I'm going to post that. Mm. So, uh, it'll be out on the 4th of July. Shocker. Americans, all that. Uh, and there's a poster they released as well showing off uh, all the all the kids and stuff. Mm-hmm. They're all watching fireworks on the hill. Again, 4th of July. Mm-hmm. Um but then there's something, something's appearing behind them, like crawling up along. You can't see what it is properly though. But it looks quite grim. Um, it's supposed to be set according to according to the report. It's set in the summer of eighty five, um, and there's a companion book that goes along with the series, which describes the new series as quote the final summer of their childhood. Now, personally, to me, that screams final season. But with how much money it makes, I don't think they're going to end it here. Mm. I don't know. What do you think? I mean. 
see, you and me both know when it comes to making films and series and stuff like that, you've got to jump ship before it gets too old. Yeah, you've got to get to a point where it's just got to end. It's got to end. I mean, Game of Thrones, for instance. I know you're not a fan of Game of Thrones, but you know how big it is. That's what I mean. It's coming to an end. Yeah, that is ending this year. That's what I mean. It's it's breaking bad. Mm -hmm. That made how much money that had to end end before, obviously, it... It's one of them, all good things have to come to an end regardless. Yeah, of course. Eventually, even me and you being fans of The Walking Dead, mm. me being there from day dot. Still proud of that. Still up every day, mate. Every day. 31st, day. Uh, 31st of October 2010, we 9 know. o'clock. We know, Liam. We yeah. Know. I'll never forget that day. Never forget that day, of course. Okay. But yeah, anyway. Yeah. All the things have got to come to an end, so mm-hmm. maybe this will be the end. I don't know. I think they'd be stupid to cut it short now. I think you could easily get a good two more seasons out of it before people start falling off. I think it depends what they do with the third season, because the end of season two left up left, had a bit of a cliffhanger-esque ending. Mm. I won't spoil it for you if when you watch the show yourself, but um, I don't know. It's, it, it always boils down to don't drag it out. That's what I mean. Like, I feel like, okay... As, mu- I'm, as much as I fucking love the series, I'm going to have to slag it off a little bit here. Okay. I felt like The Walking Dead was starting to drag it out. Yes. Like, but they were taking too long to finish certain stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you'd ask me, I think they took way too long with Negan. Mm. Like, I didn't fight me on that. I, no, I, no. I think they took too long with Negan. The whole story arc could have been done. Like, how long? It, took, what, it was about, what, three seasons? Yeah, he came in, was it... End of season five? End of season six? End of season six, I think. And then he was there through seven, eight. Uh, through eight. And then season nine. He's still around in season nine now, but... No, I'm not saying I like, kill him off. He's a main character, but I think the story... No, I... you mean too focused on... They were too focused whole... on yeah. that. That's what I mean. I feel like they were too focused on the governor. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when they were in the jails and that. Yeah. I feel like they just... They, they take too long with the stories. Mm-hmm. And then some stories where they could actually take forever with mm. they just seem to just throw it away does that make sense I think I'm hoping the Whispers are class I hope that yeah the, I hope that would I hope that's a good good few seasons yeah like I could really I'd really enjoy that they actually released a few videos of the of the Whispers like I Alpha, haven't seen Alpha them Alpha and Beta have been showing off yeah that's what I mean because I'm, obviously with me being in another country mm-hmm. you haven't seen them I haven't seen anything I'd recommend it like I had a full on nerdasm because I was on Facebook and I seen like there was a trailer released yeah and no, it hasn't. Yeah, and like obviously, the person I was with at the time was a uh, had no idea why, mm-hmm. and trying to explain it to them was just like talking to a big wall. Yeah, pretty much, because they aren't into that. They aren't into like comics and stuff like that. They're not into any sort of like nerdiness. Mm-hmm. Like the other person, I the other person is into like Home and Away, Neighbours, <laughs> Emmerdale. Friends, so, so normie things. Yeah, like they're quite normal compared to like me and you, where we where we have nerdasms ad- over yeah, the world. Nerdasms, nerdasms, nerdasms. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. So, I haven't really got a chance to see him, but I wouldn't mind having a little watch sometime. Well, we'll, we'll get that up as well during the as well. Yeah. Okay, the next story, as I mentioned, is Game of Thrones. It's the final season's come out this year. We now have a date for that as well. It's the eighth and final season. It will debut on the fourteenth of April. Well, there's I believe there's six episodes this season, but each episode's near like two hours long. Oh. Full on films each episode. This one. Um, oh my god. Yeah, they've gone all out with this film. Uh, film. See, see what I mean? Yeah. Film. Gone Isn't the budget season. gone through the roof as well? Like they've gone all they've gone balls to the wall with this. Well, it's it is. I'm pretty sure it is like one of the biggest TV franchises ever. I, I mean, I could be wrong on that, but. Do you and know you know how fucking happy I was when Jason Momoa died, didn't it? Well, like in season one, he died. I don't give a shit. Do you know how happy I was. I know. I know. Okay, well, I used up a full box of tissues. Anyway, <laughs> this teaser that announced the release date showed off uh, John, Arya, and Sansa. They were in the crypt in Winterfell, which is yeah. like where all the family's buried. They're walking up to these statues because all the, all the crypts have statues of whoever's died. Mm. Uh, the statues were of themselves. I don't know what that's supposed to symbolise. And then maybe they're just getting. Maybe they're just preparing to die. Maybe, uh, but then the the torches and all the lights in the room go out. You turn around, there's this big icy fog crawling in as well. And they start drawing the weapons. I'm looking forward to it, especially for all the White Walkers. Fair enough. 
<laughs> no matter all these politics with families and who sits in the Iron Throne, the fucking Night King's coming in, you're all doomed. You're all fucked. The Night King's got a dragon now, you are definitively all fucked. And that, that was the last thing I ever seen on Facebook as well about it was, yeah, didn't the dragon like fly over to him to scream and he just sort of like goes, and fucking just changes it. No, well, one, I think, no, one of them, in the last, ep- it's been out for me, I can say this, yeah. in, the, in one of the last episodes, uh, John and his men get stuck in beyond the, beyond the wall. Yeah. Daenerys comes to rescue them with one of the dragons. Well, two, two of the dragons that are left. Uh, and one of the Night Kings takes out with a single spear. Just one. <laughs> dead. And then later on, I think it's in the last episode, actually, of the season, the, they're pulling the carcass out of the icy river. Yeah. And he touches it and resurrects it. And then at the end, the last episode shows him, the Night King, riding on the back of the dragon, going to the big fucking huge ice wall that stood for thousands of years and it gets destroyed in seconds by this dragon firing ice black breath fire breath it's like blue flame so ice or fire I'm not sure y'all fucked basically yeah it was that whole, that whole meme of hold my beer <laughs> this wall's been sunny for a thousand years you will not destroy this hold my beer hold my beer <laughs> okay next thing we're gonna talk about Liam do you remember the James Silent Bob film James Silent Bob Strike Back Fuck, fuck, mother, mother, fuck, 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 mother, mother, fuck. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that one, exactly. It's getting another film this year. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. Yep. And now, this story comes early in the month, so I'm not sure they've actually started filming. I'm pretty sure they have. I'm pretty sure I saw it somewhere on Instagram. But at the start of this month, writer, director, star, Kevin Smith, he announced that they were in the very early stages of making this film. And he he said that they were, quote, in pre-pre-production. So they're even... It's not even got a script or not, yeah. No, it has scripts. Uh, they had a first draft of the script back in 2017, and the plot of it was that Jay and Silent Bob were going to try and stop Hollywood from rebooting Blunt Man and Chronic. You know the the film they made in the fir- in Strike Back. Blunt Man and Chronic. I know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> it, it's... My favorite heroes that should be in the Marvel universe. I guess the, the funny thing about this <laughs> is this film has been touted as a reboot of the series, and it's they're trying to bit... stop reboots. <laughs> Oh, man. I, we were probably way too young to be watching Jay and Silent Bob, but it was fucking brilliant. I don't care. No, but it was. It was so good. And I don't care how many people know this. I loved being high as shit <laughs> watching these films. I used to get high as shit with family members. Yeah. Won't mention family members, but I used to get high as shit with family members. Mm-hmm. Sit there and watch all the Cheech and Chongs, all the Jays and Silent, like the Jay and Silent Bobs. Yeah. And I'll just be there going like that. <laughs> and you know the moments where like. By the way, I'm not pr- I'm not I'm not advertising doing drugs. Yeah, no, of course. I'm not advertising doing drugs, but the thing I am advertising is they were the best fucking times of my life. <laughs> like to the point that I tried watching these films sober as shit. Yeah. <laughs> and I-, I giggled. You giggled, yeah. But I remember like watching them stoned and high as fuck, and my jaw air hurting, mm-hmm. my belly aching. Ah, tears streaming down my face. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, God, back in the day. I know. And now I'm a grown-up and I can't do that no more. I'm looking forward to that regardless. Yeah. Um, moving on, we have a few more stories left now in the film section. And this is a reboot I'm not sure I'm pleased about. Oh, God. Um, they're rebooting Final Destination. Yeah, th- those horror films... The Okay, let's be honest. They were fucking... Go porn films. That's all they were. They were porn films. But they're being rebooted by the same guys who wrote Saw, another go porn film. Specifically, the writers. Let no. Let's just nope. let's just let's just be a bit more specific. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Final destination. I can't fucking English. I can't English right now. Final destination films. Yes. Where okay, just go porn. Yeah. Or compared to Saw. Yeah, Saw was... I don't know, see, Saw had an actual plot that I liked. No, I I like the whole whole element of death constantly being there. Yeah. Never actually seeing it as a character. No. But you just knew when its presence was there. Mm -hmm. I like the whole idea of, like, you can't cheat death. Death always... Ties, yeah. Death finds a way. No, I mean death always ties. That always ends, finishes his list and shit like that. Yeah. But I did like the whole aspect of like not seeing a serial killer, not seeing 
like possession, not seeing like it was just death doing his job. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I liked Saw's. Okay, let me get this cleared up as well. I liked Saw one, two, and three. <laughs> ah, yeah. Um, what, what I was gonna say was the Saw writers Patrick Melton and Marcus Dustan Dustan, who wrote four, five, and six and three D. Yeah. They're the ones who wrote those. They wrote that those films of the Saw franchise, and they're working on this. No, see, film. again, whilst we're still talking about Saw and stuff like that, mm-hmm. for me, Saw one, two, and three made a lot more sense just due to the fact of. Yeah. Okay. One was just a test. That it was genuinely just a test. That no one expected it to be as big as it was. Mm-hmm. People genuinely thought it was just going to be a one burst film. And pff, that'll be the end of it. Yeah. Like even the main guy who played the doctor. Who the film's from way out more than a year. Yeah. Who cut his own fucking leg off to escape mm. the room. Oh god, can you just imagine No, that I can't. I've no. actually tried doing it so many times. Ew. Not thinking about oh, it. Okay. <laughs> and no, yeah. I can't even bear like it's not even cutting through the skin, it would be the vibration the of feeling it up your bone. Oh god. You know what I mean? I can mm. imagine that. You know, yeah. Okay, carry on. But you think about this. His family's been kidnapped. Mm-hmm. His family is going to die. Yeah. Unless he kills this other person across the room. Uh-huh. Now the whole premise of the whole story is how far are you willing to go mm-hmm. to save your own flesh and blood? Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas in the later films it just more became It just became more just like How far are you willing to go to live? No, not even that, like still, because even that even that sort of thing is like, yeah, mate, I I will do if it can't, all right. I'm not asked how bad it sounds. If it's between me and someone else, mm-hmm. I'm telling you now, it ain't gonna be me. Well, no, I, I completely understand what you're saying. It's those first three films when you think about. I mean, I'm I've not seen them in a while, but correct me if I'm wrong on this. The second film was where they're stuck in the house. Yeah. And it's the police officer's kid who's trapped. Yeah. Um, and in the third film, it's the it's the one with the nurse who's trying to save Jigsaw's life, yeah. and her husband's going through all the all yeah, yeah. stuff. Those were about. Family, relationship yeah. stuff. From and it was literally, onwards. how far are you going... How far is... No, see, the first three were basically, for me, when I watched them, were... How far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to push yourself? How far are you willing to forget your humanity mm-hmm. in sacrificing... Sacrificing your humanity yeah. to save your family. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah. And coming from a father's point of view... I would literally destroy myself mm-hmm. to save my son. Yeah, no, I get that. You know what I mean? If I had to trade my life for my son's life in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's easier to say it when it's not in that situation, but that that was like just basically that was the films That's your for thing, me. Yeah. yeah. For me, the films were just a artistical version of how far would you actually go? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No, I get that. And then the rest of them, just for me, four onwards, just sort of felt like more, just as you said, selfish act of how far are you going to go to save yourself? Yeah. And shit like that. And it was it, it get, For me, it just became more of a, like, we're making good money on this, guys. Let's just carry on producing gore porn. Yeah, pretty much. You know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so... Sorry for the rant. No, it's all right. <laughs> so those guys are going to be writing this rebooted Final Destination film. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a reboot. It's supposed to be like a reimagining of the series as is. The last uh, Final Station film, Final Station 5, came out in 2011. Shit. It's eight years ago. Uh, this will be the sixth film in the franchise. And overall, this franchise has grossed $665 million worldwide. Which I think is a fair amount. I mean, in comparison to some films and series. Yeah, well, for like the lesser known stuff. I mean, you think like Avengers and... I'm, I'm pretty sure um, Aquaman's just grossed over a billion worldwide. So, Point proven. Yeah. But yeah, um... But then again, you've also got to look at the fact that that is a very niche market. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be doing go up on, it is 18 plus. Yeah. A lot of 18 plus people know how to get films on online and stuff now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Okay. We're well, there now with the film stuff. Uh, the Batwoman, Ruby Rose, that we saw mm-hmm. in the CW crossover, they've actually ordered a pilot. She's going to get her own series. Yes! With, with a director from Game of Thrones. Yes! Yep. So the Batwoman. I've got more project, fat material. The Batwoman project project starring Ruby Rose was given a pilot pickup with the Game of Thrones director David Nutter, who's going to helm the pilot of the of the production. Nice. Obviously, the pilot is good. They'll get a whole series. Now, David Nutter, people probably don't know his name, but he, he directed the episode "The Reigns of Castamere," 
which is more commonly referred to as the Red Wedding. I was a no. What I'm sorry, I'm not a fan. But you know the Red Wedding. But I even know the the scene. Yeah. That is an amazing he fucking that scene. He, he's the one who wrote that. He's the one who directed the episode. So I think we've got something to look forward to here. Yeah, especially if you're using some of the fucking cliffhanger. If he goes for like the cliffhangers and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, either way, the only reason the order's pilot is because of her appearance in the crossover last last month. She must have been really well received. I've seen a few little clips of her in action, and she does look really good. I mean, I'm still, I'm not even going to lie, I'm still fuming the fact that she had to get rid of a Twitter account and everything, because of defense. Oh yeah, so she not getting that back? I don't know if she got it back or not, I don't know, she probably did, but I mean, the fact got... that she had to get rid of it, that was bang out of order. Let's be honest, it was, she probably got rid of it um, because of all the initial backlash, but then after she came, after it came out and people saw how well she did... Um, it um, weren't even the acting ability though that she was getting a stick for, it no, was it sexuality. Was, it was all that as well, yeah, I know. And, well, you and me both know where I stand on that shit. I know, I know. People suck. At the end of the day, people suck. People do suck. Okay, and the last news film story we're going to talk about before we have a small break yeah. is uh, Ghostbusters. Four female Ghostbusters? The female, the feminists are taking over. I'm an adult virgin. You love that joke, don't you? I, I, I absolutely love it. I just love the meme. I know you love the meme. The meme is just amazing. Like, I have nothing against feminists. No, but that film, <laughs> that film was awful, though. Take out the gender politics of it, that film was awful. Yeah, I mean, even if you casted them with four blokes with the same story. Yeah, no, the film was fucking that, shocking. That, that was a shockingly shit but, film. But this is not about a remake of a Ghostbusters film. This is about a proper Ghostbusters 3 sequel-esque thing. Coming out in years 2020. Who's Guess going to be playing? Well, that's the thing. That's all. We don't know anything thus far other than it's coming in 2020. And guess who's going to write and, and who's going to direct and co-write it? Oh. Jason Reitman, Name who is that. the son of Ivan Reitman, the guy who made the original Ghostbusters. Ah, it's yes. his son. And he's already said that these the, the events of this film are going to take place after the original films. Um, where's, the, where's the quote here? So he, said, he told Entertainment Weekly, quote, This is the next chapter in the original franchise. It is not a reboot. What happened in the 80s happened in the 80s. And this is set in the present day. And the 2016 reboot film, which we don't talk about, has no connection to this whatsoever. Good. Yeah, good. They killed off the one character that could have saved it. <laughs> the one character that could have saved it. <laughs> such they bad, killed off. It's such a bad film. I'm not even mad at the actresses in it, because I actually kind of like the most, most of them individually. It's not, no, no, let's just get this out of the way now. It's got nothing to do with the acting ability of the cast. No. Because the acting ability of the cast members, well, let's be honest, Thor, for one. Huh? Oh, oh yeah yeah. Kevin Smith's character yeah he was brilliant I, I loved him in that yeah. as stupid as he was I loved him in it you know what I mean mm-hmm. no I mean to be fair I, I, with Melissa McCarthy I can give or take her a lot of the time mm-hmm. uh, Leslie Jones who played the black woman that's, that's kind of her thing that's, yeah. it sounds bad but that is who she was that's who she is That um, she was the stereotypical black woman in that film yeah I've not seen her anything else so I can't really comment on yeah, not her really. other acting ability same with uh, I think it's Kristen Wiig you know the cre- the weird one. Yeah, yeah, her, and then the 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 main smart one esque. I don't see her much either. And then that's the thing. I'm not seeing them much, so I can't comment. On I that think to be honest, all, even but... if you watch the trailers, the main two people that keep popping up in the trailers were Chris Hemsworth and fucking what Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, it, no, it was. I'd say it was her and the other one, the tall brunette one. The main two, because when you watch the film, they are the main. Yeah, they are the main ones, but that film. It, it, for me, it had nothing to do with the characters. It had nothing to do, sorry, not the characters. It had nothing to do with the actors. Mm-hmm. It was just a shocking storyline. Yeah, it was a shocking, sad attempt at trying to rematch, re- try and reboot the first one. Yeah, it was just it went for slapstick comedy. It was a pile of shit movie that no one should have seen. It shouldn't have been made. I mean, no, it really shouldn't. a lot of people went and watched it just for the sheer fact of it's the Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. But no, it's, it, it's unfortunately that film should never be made, in no, my opinion. Really shouldn't. But that is it for the film news. We're going to move on to the game news in just a minute when we've had a small break. So, okay. And we're back in the room. Good morning, Vietnam! I fucking love that film. I know, it's so good. We're back with our fresh cups of tea. Because we are British. We are British. Have you haven't noticed that already? And now we're going to move on to the final part of this week's episode, the gaming news, which, looking at this, is taking up a bulk of what we have to talk about. So, uh, get comfy, guys, get comfy. We're nearly there. We're on the home straight. Wait there, wait there, wait there. Okay, what's, what's occurring? Just 
gonna get myself comfy. Oh, you get oh, okay. That's a good shout. Good shout. Because my ass has been killing in this chair. Yeah, we're gonna have to get some comfier chairs. Yeah, yeah, we are. Oh, just sit my ass down on that. That's better. Sit That's my better. ass on James. Get your cock on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you love it, slot. Okay, yeah, but we don't. These don't need to know. <laughs> okay, right. So. The first thing we're going to talk about game news wise is um, there is a new console coming into the market. Uh, excuse me, what? Exactly. I mean, to be fair, it's not, to be fair, it's not going to be around for a while. But there is a new contender in the console market coming in a while. You mean it's not going to just be Xbox and PlayStation anymore? And Nintendo, they count. And Atari when they finish whatever they had to work on. That's a thing. You're telling me it's not going to be Xbox and PlayStation no more? Ah, you silly. <laughs> so according. No, via Twitter, rather, so excuse me, via Twitter, CEO and founder of Slightly Mad Studios, Ian Bell, revealed their first images of their their games console they're making called the Madbox. It, uh, I mean, there will be an image on, on screen, obviously, uh, but it, the way I can describe it now is it looks like a PC tower with neon lights on it. There's four color variants you can get of it, and obviously on the side of the bit, on the side of the thing, it's got the company's monster logo on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, looks interesting. Either way, he, he also when he revealed these images on Twitter, he showed, he answered a few questions, and he said that this, this console is not anywhere near close. Three point five years away, he said um, it will have a dedicated controller, and quote their tech will allow developers to basically hit a button and deploy their tech to all major consoles on PC. Nice. So yeah. Uh, it looks interesting either way. I remember the way when they when they first revealed they were going to make a games console because they were. I think they said something along the lines of they were mad at about like you know PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. Yeah. Like these mid generation console upgrades when they should be fucking should be like next level. Yeah, next level shit. That's what like that's see, what they to make. That's what see the thing that I that I, I can completely back them up on this because it pisses me off the fact that you're doing a mid that they do a mid gen mid generation. Mm-hmm. Update because it's ang- well no, no because that's just a way for you to sponge more money out of fucking people. Just yeah, this this should be the thing that's gonna last me a while anyway. Yeah, if you're gonna actually turn around and dedicate time to making a, G- a mid gen, mm-hmm. just save it. Yeah, put more time and effort into it and produce the next gen. Saying that, I mean saying that though, I am kind of debating getting a PS4 Pro because we've got the new TV. Yeah, I get. I that. know there's, there's rumors of the PS5 on the horizon, but until something gets announced, I'm considering a Pro. Uh. Considering, not definitively getting. No, I know, I know what you mean. I know you're only saying considering, but still, I just. Mm, no. I know, I, I, I do. There, like I said, if nothing comes between now and the next time I get money to afford a pro about a PS5, then obviously um, I'll get a pro. No, we'll but see what if happens. If something does come up or something is hinted at heavily to mm. be announced soon after that point. I mean, how old is the how old is the PlayStation Four for now? It's you know what? It's actually older than we keep thinking it is because. I know it's older than we keep thinking it is. I mean, I don't know about you. I still keep thinking it's only like two years old, three years old. And I'm I know pretty it's sure like... it was... See, I got mine in 2014. I know it's come to its end of its life cycle. I'm pretty sure it's 2013. It came out, you know. But... Because it had already been out by the time I got mine for a while. So I'm pretty sure it was 2013 it came out. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it was by now, obviously. Next story is... Uh, a fan has recreated the beloved PT demo... Remember PT? Mm. They've re- it's been remade for PC with VR support. Oh my god. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you've got a PC v- a path compatible VR headset, you can play it. But yeah. if you're not, then you're fucked. Um, it's free. You can download it right now on Game Jolt. I actually have it installed, uh, downloaded on my computer right now. Whether it'll actually work is another matter. <laughs> uh, and like I said, it's just a complete remake. I've seen one or two game footage online, and it does look pretty on point for yeah. How well it's been recreated. The only thing I noticed, it's obviously not as graphically good looking. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it seems pretty on. I mean, still, there was a baby in a sink. Yeah, I mean, well, that's one of the things I'm look. I, I, I mean, when you're I, looking forward that, to you sick, twisted individual. No, that's one of the things I'm, I'm meaning when I say it's been graphically downgraded slightly because the baby in the sink in this new version yeah. doesn't look very good. Whereas the last one actually generally looked real and creepy. Like, I, after seeing that baby in a sink, I was actually petrified to turn around. <laughs> I was a good demo, though. It was amazing. It's such a shame that got cancelled. But I've seen, I saw one or two people try and use the VR sport on it, and it's not very good right now. Yeah, At well, one point, someone turned around like that, and they could see their own character model. So they turn they turned off the sides, like, they can look around, they turn around, and don't, no one really was there looking at them. Just like, Damn. It's like dead, dead like, 
dead ahead. <laughs> anyway. Um, a I tried. Team... No, well, no, let's give it credit, though. They tried. Because me and you couldn't do fucking nothing like that. Oh, God, no. I'm not saying that. God, no. No, I didn't mean you. I just meant people in general. Let's give it some fucking... Give credit where credit's due, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Next story is uh, former Blizzard developers who created their own uh, gaming company called Second Dinner are working on a Marvel game. No specifics yet as to what platforms or what the fuck it's actually going to be about or who it's going to be about. But this team consists of ex-Blizzard employees. Blizzard be the ones who made Overwatch, Diablo, World of Warcraft. Yeah, no. Some of the big PC titles. Yeah. They are making a Marvel game. Uh, Joy Ong from Marvel Games said, quote, I know, I know. <laughs> they said, quote, the, the, yeah, the team they've assembled at Second Dinner have made some of the greatest games in history. It's going to be amazing. Or maybe spectacular. Or incredible. Or mighty. Or quite possibly all of the above. Basically just using... Marvel comic headlines to try and describe this mystery game. I mean, so personally, I'd have went with the whole like twist on it and be like, this is going to be amazing, fantastic, or absolutely shit. <laughs> well, I'm going to say that, are they? I would. I, I would give an honest opinion about my game. I'd be like, you are going to love this. I mean, or possibly hate it. We'll find out. I, I mean, th- I'm not actually put this down here, but I, it's something I wanted to mention as well to do with Marvel games. They mm. released something a while ago. It was essentially the, the logo, mm-hmm. Marvel Games logo, but all slightly where the the, the A in games was a four. I don't know what I was looking at that going, Fantastic Four game. Is a Fantastic Four game in the works? Maybe. Maybe. I'd hope so. I, uh, hope I actually really like Fantastic Four. Like, as a character's... I, the films were awful. Well, the latest film was awful. I like the old ones. I like the, I think the older ones called Captured... Yeah. Fantastic Four, as they should have been. Yeah, the newer one was just a pile of shit. Apart from Doom. No, even Doom was awful. No, I, I mean like. Oh, you mean the old Doom f- in all of the fucking oh, films? Oh yeah, no Doom. Doom was bad. Well, Doom was worse than the newest one because he's just a whiny fucking brat, teenager fella. I don't know. Yeah, but speaking of Fantastic Four, though, moving on, something fantastic is coming to Marvel Spider Man. Something Fantastic Four related is coming. Fair enough. We don't know what. We don't know when, other than the fact that it's quote really soon. Um, oh, isn't the Human Torch and Spider Man like really good mates in the comic book? Yeah. So well, there's been like I said, there's been no mention of Fantastic Four this far. Like, if you swing around the, in, the, in the PS4 game, there's no Baxter building. There's no mention of them at all. Um, but something Fantastic Four is coming. So when are we gonna get a Daredevil game? <laughs> we we may never. I mean, we, you'd be kind of fucked if it was VR compatibility. <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? I'd play the shit out of that. <laughs> a Daredevil VR game, mate. You couldn't stop me playing that. You couldn't fucking play it. Well, think no, about no, no. no. Think about what I'm saying here. No, I, th- I know what you're saying, but there is um, there is a game where you play as a line person on VR. You use on, you use sonar to see around. It's a horror game, funnily enough. I would. I want to play this. I know I, it does look pretty good, but not the point. So yeah, they released. They said that something Fantastic Four is coming to Marvel Spider Man. In all likelihood, let's be honest. You know, put put our dreams aside. It's mm-hmm. probably some suits. Probably. Because Spider-Man has two suits related to Fantastic Four. Does he? Yeah, he's got a really old one called the Bombastic Bagman. It was... I can't remember the actual plot. Mr. Lover Lover. (laughs) I don't remember what actually happened in the comic, but Spider-Man went to Fantastic Four, back to the building. Yeah. Something happened with his suit. In fact, no, you know what I remember now? I think I know what it is. It's during the symbiote arc where he's got the suit, and while while Reed Richards has got it to analyse it, He's got no suit to, to get home in. So yeah. he he takes an old Fantastic Four suit and a paper bag over his head. It's a paper, it's the bombastic bagman. The bombastic I know, it's it's, it's ridiculous. But then there's also Mr. Love Lo- That's all I'm thinking. <laughs> I can just imagine him swinging around like they call me Mr. Bombastic, the Fantastic. <laughs> but then there's also there's also his future foundation suit. So after Johnny Storm died in the comics, mm-hmm. rather than be called the Fantastic Four, Reed Richards changed the name to the Future Foundation. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's still FF. Yeah. It featured him, Invisible Woman, The Thing, his two kids, and Spider-Man. Yeah. So it's probably that. I mean, in in, a, in an ideal world, this would be like a free DLC expansion similar to what we got yeah, yeah. that introduced the Fantastic Four. But I doubt that's going to happen. I really, I don't care. I know it's a just a, it's 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 a constant dream of mine. But I would love a Daredevil game. Mm. Like, let's think about this. Daredevil is not a superhero. Well, no, think about is. it. He's not. 
He is. He has superpowers. Where? Well, he's every, every other sense has been heightened because he's lost his sight. You mean what happens to blind people in general? No, but it's superhuman senses. I just think he can hear people from like blocks away. Yeah, but that's only because, yeah, okay, but it's not really so much superhero. It nah. is, though. I'll have to say, uh, we can have the segments off camera, but no, in my opinion, it's not superhero. It is, though. It's just really sensitive hearing. No, it's definitely superhero, though. Okay. We could, yeah, as you say, as you say, we discuss this off later. camera. Yeah, but. He's not a hero. He is, though. Okay, so. Let's just agree to disagree that you're wrong. Let's kick and kiss my ass on that matter, shall we? So, <laughs> moving on. The the fabled Uncharted movie. Yeah. Um, this this is a two part story. This it lost its director, uh, in middle of December. Stranger Things director Sean Levy had to stop working on the Uncharted film due to a quote video game action comedy free guy that he was set to be directing, I believe, or writing. That got greenlit. Okay. It's just, I think it's like a sitcom by Twentieth Century Fox. Uh, he told the playlist in August last year that it was very close to production. Was was in charter film. So this film that's been rumored and suggested since fucking two thousand nine. Shit. Publicly, um, it only got Tom Holland on board after Spider Man came out and he was very popular. Um, yeah. So they've lost the director there. But the update to the story is that now I have a new director. Yeah. Um, in the director from Ten Cloverfield Lane. <sighs> Did you watch that one? I didn't. Yeah, but. I don't know. I kind of enjoyed it. It was better than the other ones. I'll definitely give you that one. Hmm. But it's still... Are you talking still... about the first one or the Netflix one? No, I'm talking... the first one's great. I didn't like any of the Cloverfields. I like the first one. I mean, the whole found footage style filming, it's... I can't stand any found footage. I don't know what the big rave was, like, when that first came out, and then every film after that came, like, this found footage. I mean, like, footage. Blair Witch. Yeah. That's the one that really idolised it. That idolised it, but for me, it was... Blair Witch may have started it. Yeah. But it was, for me, Cloverfield definitely... It. popularized it popularized it yeah yeah and then it just seemed like every other fucking film out there was a fan footage was a fan footage mm-hmm. and I was like no and where did you guys keep finding this footage well that kind of thing works well with horror I reckon mm, no well it wor- It sort of lends a certain credence to it it lends a, it lends a hand to it but it has to be done a proper way yeah like I can't stand this whole running away and the camera going fucking <laughs> everywhere because I don't want to sit there for three minutes looking at Blur, fucking blur. Yeah, just. Yeah. Like, mm. But yeah, so either way, the, the guy who ha- who directed that film, uh, Dan Dan Trachtenberg, Trachtenberg, he is now going to direct on Charted, which uh, is hoping to begin filming this year. Is that going to be a fan footage? <laughs> I hope not. It's got Tom, Tom Holland in it. I'm not sure how they would do that. Either way, moving on. Uh, Bungie, the guys who make Destiny and the original Halos. Oh, I thought you were suggesting we go Bungie. <laughs> I could only really jump on my own. No, what the fuck? <laughs> they have split from Activision. They, they've left Activision. Their relationship status is now single. Uh, they are keeping the Destiny... slide into some DMs. Of course you are. Uh, they are keeping the Destiny IP, though, and they're looking to self-publish. Uh, apparently, the transfer between Activision and Bungie for the IP is already underway. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're just going to carry on with the franchise themselves. Why not? Obviously, being such a small studio with a big I- new IP like that, they had to go to Activision yeah. initially. They've said all that was in, the, in, the, in their blog post about it. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, now they've made enough of a name for themselves, they can sort of go over their own way. Yeah. Like Fleetwood Mac. You can go, go your own, own way. way. Yeah. Uh, and EA is the next story. EA, that studio we love. EA to Sports. Hate. Yeah. Uh, they've cancelled another Star Wars game. Uh, 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 oh no! Shut up! You know you love it. No, I don't. You don't like Star Wars? I don't like this. All right, I don't like the Battlefronts. It's not Battlefront. No, it's just something completely different. This was their open world Star Wars game that they were working on. So basically, the only Star Wars game I've ever actually liked was Forged. Uh, Forged Forged, 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 Forged Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was the key on it. I, that was the only one I really enjoyed. Yeah. Mainly, I think, because you just got to play as a bad guy. Hmm. You know what I mean? Well, if you wanted to play the bad guy, <laughs> you had the choice. I, I played the bad guy. Either way. So this open world Star Wars game was being worked on by EA Vancouver, mm-hmm. which is the Canadian studio, and it's a, a, reportedly been cancelled. I don't think it was concrete yet, but it's apparently been cancelled. Uh, they've been working on the title since Visceral Games closed in 2017, because they were the ones working on it originally with Amy Henning, mm-hmm. the one who directed the original Uncharted film, mm-hmm. Games. 
Lucasfilm films. Um, there's no idea yet if they're going to make another game or not, or, or whatever. But Would you... What I want. I didn't get to play... I don't think... I haven't played the last Uncharted yet. Hmm. Mm-hmm. The last Nathan Drake Uncharted. Uncharted 4? Yeah. It's brilliant. I haven't played it yet. It involves pirates. I need to, like... I, I mean, have you played it? I've got a copy. I'm pretty sure it's in the other room. You know the next question. Can you borrow it, yeah? Yeah, I need to, because I've been wanting to play this game. It's just... Absolutely. Um, um, if it's not broke. here, if it's not here, it'll be in my parents' house, so you can, either way you can borrow it. Yeah, either way, it's just I'm broke, so I didn't have the ch- I haven't had the chance to play it, but would you consider another Nathan Drake Uncharted? Um, Even if it's no. not the next sequel? No, because oh, yeah. I mean, wh- when you play Uncharted Four, you'll understand why. You'll understand why I say that. Um, not that I wouldn't like to see Nathan Drake again because he's brilliant, but but in terms of his, sto- it'd have to be a prequel. But then the problem with prequels now, his story's over. Is we always know there's no risk to it. Uh, That's the issue. I suppose because you know we all know how the story ends now. So any any threat that they could try and muster or tr- any any. Um, Oh, what's the one thing of any try any weight they try and put into the story is not gonna have it because we know the outcome. Yeah, yeah, I see exactly. what you're saying. So no, that's why I think they'd have to do a prequel now if they were doing anything else. But yeah. they could always make something new. Like uh, like there's a new character in number four, Sam, his brother. Um, he's he's really good. I'd, I'd play as him some more. They also did the excuse me the DLC standalone DLC for Uncharted Four, which yeah. is Uncharted Lost Legacy, where you play as Chloe. Which, see, I haven't played that either. That was good. That was good. Uh, I think you can probably get that on sale now. Probably. Um, it was quite short and quite contained, but it was still good. It was obviously... you. Bas- it's basically you playing... The mechanics are the exact same. Yeah. You're just playing as Chloe. Alongside Nadine, who you'll meet in Gen Charter 4, and you'll hate her. Why? Because she's, she's really fucking good. Okay. She's a bad guy that can kick your ass every time. Great. Yep. But either way, I'll enjoy it, yeah. Next story on the lo- on the docket um, is to do with Halo. Halo Infinite, the, the next Halo game in the franchise. Oh, wait, the tackle went off in here to this. Oh. Is, that, is that the theme? Yeah. I don't know. I don't play it. Either way, Halo Infinite will have four-player split-screen co-op, like back in the day. <laughs> yep. I didn't play it. <laughs> I played the first... No, tell that. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to own up here. Okay. Back in the day when Liam was a bit retarded and I had an Xbox. <laughs> yeah, I went there. Carry on. I did play, I did get the Halos, mainly because they were an Xbox exclusive. Mm-hmm. And whilst I had the Xbox, I thought, you know what, no. I, I want to play an exclusive, I want to play the exclusives. I want to be able to be that kid that was like, what, you can't, you can't play it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. See what I mean by retarded? So I played 1, 2, and 3, and then got a PlayStation 3 and thought, this is much better. Just bear those words in mind when we get later on in the episode. Just want to be just warning you now. Oh, don't tell me it's getting... It's no, not... there's, another, there's another story further on about Xbox, but I'll tell you later. So, um, yes. 343 Industries, who now run the Halo franchise, announced during a live stream that they will have four-player split-screen co-op, just like in the old days. Another feature they're adding is black undersuits, which are basically parts of the armor that are not metal. Mm-hmm. Don't miss out the thing there. And they're also going to have player customization like they had in Halo Reach. Which, again, I don't know the franchise, so I can't comment on that. And to be fair, my cousin had Halo Reach. He played it. I watched them play mm-hmm. Out of, it. It it definitely had the old school feel of Halo, but again, it's not something I can really comment on because it's not a game that... Yeah. One, I played in a long time. Mm-hmm. And two, when I played online, I hated it. Yeah, I get that. Kind of the same reason why I hated the Call of Duty franchise for a while, because the all the exoskeleton running across the wall, backflip, fucking shooting grenade launches halfway across the map and pinging someone on the head. No. No, I get that. Okay. But yeah. Next story is one you're going to hate so much. Well, you're going to love it, but you're going to hate it at the same time. I'll tell you why. So that new Alien game that was rumoured for a while got announced. Yeah. Alien Blackout. Mm-hmm. It's a real thing. Yes. It's, it's a expert. mobile game. It's a fucking mobile game. Like smartphones and shit. <laughs> the, the, the long awaited game that everyone thought is going to be an Alien Isolation sequel, which definitely deserves one. That came out in 2013, by the way. And it's still. No, wait, 2014. Totally. And it's still. You can, it, it's dropped in price, but it's still up there. Yeah, still a great game. 
it, this this isn't that. It's a fucking mobile game. Still car- still has Amanda Ripley in it though. Uh, in fact, the 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 description of the game reads as such. So quote. In Alien Blackout, players assume the role of Amanda Ripley, trapped aboard a crippled Wayland Utani spaceship carrying a bloodthirsty creature. Players will need to survive and increasingly challenge its fear inducing levels by balancing the controls of Space Station's emergency systems to skillfully guide their crew to safety and avoid encounters with the enemy. The unpredictability of both the mysterious alien and the ultimate fate of the crew will force players to make life or death decisions that permanently alter the outcome of the game. So, it's uh, Five Nights at Freddy's Clone. In with Alien, so you know how Five Nights at Freddy's is a case of like, mm. oh, but I can serve my power and check where the fucking animatronics are. That's yeah. what you're doing here. Okay, can I just you, you can quote me on this? I don't care anymore. You can quote me. You can fight me. I'm gonna say this. Okay. Mobile games are not games. I mean, they are entertainment systems at in, most. In a technical sense, you're wrong. But I mean, like, I understand where you're coming from. Everyone, the, 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 it's going to sound so elitist, but the people who sit there and claim to be gamers, yet yeah, spend all the time on Candy Crush. Yeah. yeah. Mm, you're not a gamer. No, not in the, not in the classical sense. Or not in the preferred sense. Not in the professional sense. <laughs> you're not a gamer, full stop, if your only, mo- only time of playing games is... Clash of Clans. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't give a, I don't argue with me. <laughs> Anyway. I feel like I should be that meme right now sitting here with my cup of tea just like this got with the sign in front of me saying mobile games are not gamers. I would change, change my mind. My mind. That's a uh, it's a series done by Stephen Crowder, who's a very controversial figure on YouTube. That, he's a very conser- he's very conservative. So I'll just put it like that. I, that that's me right now when it comes to gaming. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And let's move on before Lean rages. Yes, so Beyond Good and Evil 2, yeah. which is a game that I'm kind of looking forward to. I enjoyed the first one. It's been revealed that it will be an online-only game. Yeah. So, uh, there's a big passage here, so bear with me. So, quote, Beyond Good and Evil 2 is an online multiplayer game with a rich co-op and seamless experience. As such, the game will only be playable with an internet connection in order to have the seamless navigation, receive dynamic updates, and play with your friends. This, is, this comes from a, uh, a post by the team at Ubisoft. Again, quote, The choice to play co-op, however, remains yours to make, so playing Beyond Good and Evil 2 solo is absolutely possible if you're into that lone space pirate kind of thing. Now, I don't know about you. Yes, that's definitely me. That's definitely you. Yeah. At most, at most, it's me and you. That'll work yeah. co-op on something. Yeah, I d- this, is, this is my thing with online games. I mean, obviously, Overwatch, for instance, I like that because there's no story to it. Yeah. If I'm if I'm having if I'm it's a game that's got a story to it, I want experience. I'm I want to do it on my own. Flying solo, unless as you say there's a co-op element to it. Yeah. I'd play. I'd happily play with you with you, with you on it. So. It's one of them, isn't it? If we're not getting in, that is. So. See, I don't. Uh, it's it's one of them. I don't mind online. Yeah. Stories, as long as I've got the option to have it, just solo. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? Yeah. Well, according to these guys, you can still go solo. That's what I mean. Like. Dying Light, for example. Yeah. It's an online story game. Well, it is and it isn't. You no, can turn it online on and off if you want. No, that's my point I'm making. Oh, okay. But you have the option to just, nah, I want to go solo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think that's what they, I don't know if that's what they're getting at here, though. It seems, it sounds like it's something similar to that, where you can just play on your own, but you are still kind of online, if that makes sense. No, that's what, that's it, that's, no, that's the like, point I'm making. It's like, Destiny. It's Destiny. Yeah. 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 That's that's exactly what it sounds like to me. <sighs> Jeez. I know. It's a lot. We've gone over two hours at this point. This is actually our longest episode ever. Shit. Mm-hmm. I'm, okay. We're not even halfway through the stories about it. We we still have one more page to go. That's Let's it. Let's do this. Okay. We have two stories here relating to Kingdom Hearts 3. The soul you bro. Comes out in less than two weeks. I'm super fucking excited about it. The first story here is the file size that is required for the game. Now, okay. we, we talked about a rumour around for a while, a while ago about rumoured file sizes, but it's been confirmed now through, well, the box art, that you need a minimum of 40 gigabytes of disk space Shit. for Kingdom Hearts 3. That's, I'd say that's quite standard, to be fair. Is it? Well, that sounds uh, quite big if you ask me. I don't know, Spider-Man's like 70. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, to be fair, that's that's the data on the disk, but there's always going to be a day one update. Yeah, but that's still a big fucking ask if you ask me. I know. 
Uh, so that's that's that. The second thing, actually, speaking of updates, is they've released a schedule for their game updates within the first week. So obviously, f- through the t- Kingdom Hearts Twitter account, mm-hmm. day one, t- uh, Tuesday 29th, which is launch day, it'll have a day one update, which will fix a few bugs, and it'll add the memory archive, which is a collection of videos available from the title menu that tells you the story of the series thus far. Just like condensed bites of each game to sort of it, say this is the first game you pick up in the series. Yeah. Um, it will sh- just give you a quick backstory so you can understand fully what's going on. Yeah. Uh, on Wednesday the 30th, there will be another update which will add in the epilogue video. As we, we, we covered a while ago saying that they're taking out the epilogue and the secret movie to avoid any spoilers getting out before the game was fully released. Yeah. So that's going to get added in on Wednesday. Obviously, in order to see the epilogue, you have to finish the game. So I doubt anyone's going to finish it in a day. But I could be proven wrong. And then on Thursday the 31st, they're going to add in the uh, ever-popular secret movie, which is another thing for the series as well. Yeah, yeah, Which, again, beat the game, but in order to see the secret movie, you have to meet a certain set of criteria, which in games past usually meant complete the game on hard or hardest difficulty setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, so... I mean, I think, myself personally, when it comes to this game, I'm going to run through it normal. Uh, if I don't get the secret movie then, I'll just go, go run through it again on hard. But that's my two cents on the matter. I mean, so personally, Kingdom Hearts always been more of your type of game, so I haven't really got an input to put on this. That's why... No. Okay. Every time we talk about Kingdom Hearts, I sort of just go, uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. No, I get it, man. I get it. It's kind of like, like me when we get onto Call of Duty and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Don't worry, there's some more games in here, there's more stories in here that are more to your liking, um, but this isn't one of them, unfortunately. Uh, so, Persona 5R, whatever the fuck it is, has been announced. Yeah. I know we talked a while ago about the rumours, like, I think there was Persona 5R, um, there was a B in there, an S as well, they were all registered domains. Yeah. But either way, they've, they've officially confirmed that some Persona 5R, whatever that is, is coming to the PS4 with a full reveal in March 2019. Now, people speculate that it could be a sort of re-release of Persona 5 because Persona 3 and 4 both got re-releases with additional content on top of them for, for a lower price, like, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but that's something that happened then. People think it might happen now with this. I'm a bit less so on that side of things. I mean, if they do, it could be like a Final Fantasy 15 situation where the other year they released the King's Edition. They added extra story bits. Uh, as you know, All the DLC previously got added in as well for free. They could do that with this, um, but as long if they do release it in sort of like a physical form of this complete edition with extra, I don't know, 20 hours worth of stuff. Yeah. Because that's how much was added into Persona 4 was an extra 20 hours of shit, which is pretty good. Yeah. Um, if they add that in, if they do make a physical copy of that, I'd hope they release like an update or an add-on for people who've already bought the game to then get this extra shit as well. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Probably have to pay like an extra five or some shit. No idea. Yeah, but when, when, when consider them what you're getting for an extra five, have it? Yeah, no, I'd, I'd absolutely 100% buy this. Yeah. Animal, but I'm just saying, like, I hope that's an option. Yeah, yeah no, I see You're not going to be go out and buy an entirely new copy of the game. Yeah, no, no, I get, I get what you're saying. Uh, other people speculate that it could be the long rumored Persona 5 fighting game called Persona 5 Rumble. Uh, the, reason they've, now, the reason they say this is because um, Persona 4 spin off games, the arena ones, they were abbreviated as P4A. Mm. Now, Persona 4 also had an animation, an animated series called P4A. Yeah. So it caused a bit of conflict. So this is why people are thinking that, you know, if it is a Persona 5 fighting game, they'll change the acronym to make it a bit more understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, the, thing that, the thing that we know this isn't, obviously with the confirmation that it's a PS4 title, is it's not a Switch port. Because with the Joker announcement being a, a Smash Brothers character, everyone's like, oh my god, Persona 5 on the Nintendo Switch. But no, nothing yet. <laughs> okay, now we have a story for you, Liam. I'm okay. sorry to keep you in the dark there, mate. Anthem, which is a game coming out next month. I know you're excited for it. Mm-hmm. I think it looks pretty good too. I'm going to get it day one, but I know you're excited for it. We are, are going to get demos for Anthem 2 specifically. Okay. The first demo is called the VIP demo. Okay. You can only get this if you pre-order the game or if you're a member of EA Access or Origin Access. Now, we don't have EA Access and Origin Access on PS4. So, if you want to get a PS4 version of this demo, the only way you're going to get it is pre-order. Yeah. And that demo will be available from the 25th to 27th of this month. Now, I'm not sure whether it means that 
if you pre-order it within those few days, yeah. you'll get the demo there and then. Or if you pre-order, say you pre-ordered it before, mm-hmm. and these three or four days came up, and then you get the code. Yeah, can't tell you exactly what. I feel like you'd be better off just pre-ordering it in those three days if you want this demo. Yeah. Or alternatively, you could wait because there is a second demo. It's called the Open Demo, mm-hmm. which will be available for free to download from the PS4, Xbox One, and PC from the first of February to the third. Well, get on to do that. Yeah, just wait a bit longer and get a, get yourself without pre-ordering it. I'll likely pick that up for myself. Now, as it's supposed to be an online game, I'm imagining that you can't play it past those three days, if that makes sense. No. You can download it, but probably can't play it past those three days. Yeah. We'll find out when that when the time comes, though. Another game that's getting a demo that I know you're excited for, Liam. DMC5. <laughs> DMC5 is getting a, getting a demo. Or should I say another demo? So, according to the Twitter account, which this tweet went out on the 7th of January, so it's been a little while. Yeah. Uh, it says, quote, huge thanks to everyone who downloaded and tried out the DMC5 Xbox One demo. They already had a demo. That's the problem here. Mm-hmm. As of today, it will no longer be available for download, but it's still playable if you have it on your system. And they ended the tweet by saying, a new demo is coming to Xbox One and PS4 February 7th. Guess on the 7th of February, we can go and get an actual demo to play ourselves. Guess what I wonder? Play that demo. Make love to that demo. <laughs> Make sweet, tender, sexual love to that demo. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Another... We've got a third story about the demo here. Uh, this is a VR title. Now, I know this is one you're interested in. Okay. Firewall Zero Hour, which is the the gun one with the mm. online VR thing. It's getting a free trial for PS Plus subscribers only. Um, it is available to download and play... F- on from the 18th to the 20th, so this weekend. Okay. In fact, if you have a PSVR, if you have a PS Plus account, you can get this demo, give it a try. I'm almost certain you have to have an aim controller. Don't know 100% on that one. I think you can use other control methods. Yeah. I'm not too sure. I think I'll give it a go though. Yeah. Because it's not one that I was curious. It's one that's kind of like it looks okay. It's something to, to be honest with you. It's something to use the aim controller for. Yeah, yeah, because at the minute we've had like what two or three games that use it, mm. and one of them was Doom, and Doom VFR was shit. And um, with the other one, like Bravo Team, yes, Bravo Team was shit as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, there now, Call of Duty 2019. Yeah, we know there's a new Call of Duty game coming out this year, yeah, but it isn't gonna be Ghosts 2. What? It's not gonna be Ghosts 2. Oh, for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, to be fair. This is coming from Jason Jason Schreier, who's a reporter for Kotaku. He has a lot of insider sources and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he commented on a, on a post talking about 2019's Call of Duty game. And he just simply said, it ain't Ghost 2. That sucks. Yeah. I hear, I hear Ghost is quite a popular one. Uh, it's, a, it's an argument. It's a... It's a deep argument between Call of Duty fans. Some people loved it. Some people thought the bullets, the guns were too OP. Some thought that you didn't get enough life. Mm-hmm. Some people loved it because of how realistic it was. Yeah. And I've sort of come to the conclusion, the amount of people that I've spoken to, or the, amount of, the amount of people I've spoken to about this subject, mm-hmm. is every time Call of Duty fans have this argument, yeah. I've noticed a lot more the 20, I must say 23, because that's, and that's my age the people that are 23 18 up to 18 upwards yeah the ones who got to play fine style with big red one mm-hmm. do you know what world war a little bit world at war stuff like that you know the proper and i hate saying this word because i repeat myself the proper boots on the ground call of duty games mm-hmm. they're the ones that love ghost yeah it's the younger ones that didn't get to play them games and just sort of dove in at like Ghost that didn't like Ghost, but then I've noticed these younger ones are all love like the exoskeletons, advanced warfare, and stuff. You know the shit that I can't stand. Yeah. These are the kid. They're the ones that hate Ghost. Okay. But mm. I'm a, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little bit gutted that it's not Ghost too. Well, I mean, it is worth noting though that this year actually marks the tenth anniversary of Modern Warfare Two. So. While while we may not be getting Ghost Two, uh, it could be it could be possible that the other the next entry could either be something completely different, 
um, and feature a remaster of Modern Warfare 2, similar to what happened with Infinite Warfare and yeah. the first Modern Warfare game. Or it could just be the remaster of this game solo. I have no idea. As I say, it, it's one of them. It's been 10 years, and I like, th- I like to think we put some credence on these anniversary marks, like we did with Prince of Persia, even mm. though that failed us. Um, but yeah, that failed us big time. Yeah, it failed us hugely. I don't know. Either way, this, the moral of the story here is, unfortunately, it's not going to be Ghost 2. So, another game that has been rumoured for a long time is a Borderlands Game of the Year remaster for PS4. I so, saw you, this one. Yes, okay, so Borderlands, the handsome collection came out in 20, 2015. If for some reason it only featured um, Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, obviously it's called the handsome collection because of the the bad guy, Handsome Jack, yeah. being so prominent in the, in the two games. So the first one kind of got pushed to the wayside. But last year it was... Sort of, it was last year a remastered version of this game was spotted on a Korean ratings board, and now it's been spotted again on a Taiwanese rating board. So it's one of those, it's still completely a rumor. So never try and take it as anything but a rumor. Yeah, never take it any more than with a grain of salt. Exactly. Uh, But I I like to think it could happen because I just think it makes sense. Do you know what I mean? No, no, I completely see where you're coming from. It's just one of them, whether it works or not whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, the next second class thing we're going to talk about now uh, Telltale's The Walking Dead final season yeah now we know that Telltale is gone uh-huh. which is uh-huh. still a crying shame because they were brilliant yep but the, the Telltale The Walking Dead series was picked up by Skybound who obviously is Robert Kirkman's company who makes uh, the entertainment side of Walking Dead franchise mm-hmm. obviously they, they worked with former <laughs> developers Sorry. at Telltale and they've announced the release date for the third episode Mm. of a series yeah um, now this is the complicated matter on the thing it came out on the 15th which is yesterday yeah if you go onto the store however you can't see it on its own what I don't fully understand myself but I've noticed that if you click on the season pass it's there no no hang on if you click on the season pass you can see episode 2 but you can't see episode 3 I'm thinking either it's been delayed and no one's saying anything about it because like I said it's put out yesterday mm. um so, so like, I'm thinking that if you buy the season pass, it will be available to you then. But yeah. On its own, no. I can't say with any certainty. I think maybe it's a case of those who've already bought the season pass before the Telltale collapse, mm-hmm. they'll have access to it. I can't say with any certainty. I just don't get why Telltale even collapsed. It was, I thought they were doing really well. Apparently not. They had some really good games out. Yeah. Wolf you... Among Us, mm-hmm. Walking Dead. They made, well, they made Back to the Future. Yeah, but that was like early Telltale. Yeah, and I really, that's what made us still like though. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd like to see this. Either way, the series getting finished off. There's only four episodes going to be in this season. Yeah. Um, if they manage to do all four, I'll probably actually pick up the final season to close off the entire story. Yeah. Uh, and the last, the last story, quotation marks, we're going to talk about, is a, a study that was done by LG, you know, the electronics company. Yeah. They took, they did a study that showed that Xbox gamers are, quote, the best gamers <laughs> I knew you'd react like that. Okay, so I don't have much more other than what they've said about this study. Yeah, them 12 year olds are amazing. <laughs> okay, let's hang on. So the first part of this quote goes like this um, quote, More than 1,400 gamers participated in LG's Elite Reaction Test, created in partnership with Activision. PC gamers happen to fare the worst with an average reaction, uh, an average reaction accuracy of 67.7% compared to Xbox players who had an average of 77.1%. Reaction to what though? This is the thing. When taking the test, users were required to click on targets that faded from green to red as quickly as possible to help increase their score. The factors that were, the, the things that they used to calculate this this average and scores and stuff in accuracy were um, how many targets were hit, how many targets were missed, and how quickly the targets were hit as well. Okay. They used all that to, to do the maths here, I guess. Quote, overall reaction scores produced from the test show that console gamers showed con- yeah, shows console gamers to have the best reaction or twitchiness. Xbox gamers having the average reaction score of 79.7% and PlayStation gamers with 71.9%. PC had the lowest average reaction score with 62.2%. <laughs> so according to LG, the TV company, Xbox gamers are the best. Now... I don't know about you, but I, I know I know one or two things about studies and stuff because because well because university and shit. Yeah, this study seems very problematic. 
are very problematic. Yeah, hundred um, <laughs> percent. Just okay. Just initially, tell me what you think about about hearing that. What's your first thought? First thoughts on that? Well, of course, they're gonna have the best accuracy when you're younger. <laughs> you know, before you start actually becoming an adult. Yeah. And being a pubertic teen. Of course you're going to have better eyesight. Mm-hmm. Of course you're going to have better eyesight. So when you're a lot younger and you play colourful games like Fortnite <laughs> and, you know, not proper games. Yeah. Like, you know, Call of Duty and stuff. <laughs> you know when you play like really, really colourful games where you can do the floss? Oh God, don't even talk about the fucking floss. I'm just saying, like, I- you know... Of course, you're gonna be better at reacting to color changes, and you did so well. I am so proud of you, Xbox players. Give me a little, give me a little pin. Just, a, just. You oh, did, you're you, so you fucking, you're so cute. But one day you will grow up and get a PLA station. <laughs> a PlayStation. A PlayStation. <laughs> because you know, every day someone has to grow up, and I suppose I'm just, you know, I suppose Xbox players, they just, just, you know, it, it's cute. It's yeah. cute, what I'm getting at. It's cute. Okay, so... <laughs> talk, I think I fucking hate Xbox players. Spe- right, speaking, as like a, speaking of like a, like a, 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 like a, so someone who has to analyse studies on a regular basis and yeah. point out any flaws and stuff, the biggest problem with this is they're looking at a very specific type of gamer. Shooting, shooting games? Yeah, they are That's looking it. at first-person shooters. Yeah, so of course... As you say. To be fair, they have gone for the more... And you're going to hate me when I say this. I know what you're going to say. They have gone for the more popular genre of gamers. Yes, unfortunately. I, to, I can't argue that fact, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but that's that's the main issue with this. The, the brand teaching all Xbox gamers as being the best gamers. Because they're better at shooting games than apparently PC and, and PS4 gamers. So. I mean, it's not even that. I mean, let's be honest. Like I said... It's it is Xbox Xbox players are, and you can fight me on this. It has been studies. They have the youngest console players. They are childish consoles. <laughs> fight me on this. They are childish consoles. You know what I mean? Just I'm not trying to make a dig here, but just as an aside, do you not think the name Xbox is just trying so hard to sound cool? That's that's my point. Xbox, all all Xbox, is, they are aimed at the young generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, Xbox, they could have like the faster this, the faster that. Yeah, that's, again, you're just, you're putting pinstripes on a race car and saying it goes faster. No. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't work. No. Oh, I that's like, you know, these are the, the people that sit in and go, Ed fuck the better because they run faster. Yeah, I run faster with new shoes on as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. No. It's, Xbox, it, 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 for me, Xbox, they've got the advantages. Mm-hmm. They've got a lot more cons mm. to make up for that. And, like the fact they have no games. Yeah, or well, the fact, no exclusive games, should I say. Or should it, yeah, they've got no exclusive games, and how many gaming companies have Microsoft bought now? Uh, well, at E3 they announced like five, didn't they? Five or six. And then they announced a few more after E3 they bought out. I'm just saying, they've got no creativity whatsoever. Yeah, they're buying the competition. Yeah. But that's enough ragging on Xbox for one day, I think, and that is... It's not, but okay. Okay, for today, <laughs> we'll do more next week. That's it for this week's episode of the Max Games Podcast. Shit. The first one of 2019, and it's over two hours long. <laughs> two and a half. God fucking... Well, I mean, to be fair, there's a bit to cut out in the middle, so hopefully that will take some of the strain away. Thank you all very much for listening along, though. We really do appreciate it. Uh, it shouldn't be as long next week. No, well, it shall not be as long This is all week. the clean-up from the new yeah. year. So, yes. Um, as I say, thank you so much for watching, uh, listening and watching and such. And... Um, be sure to give us a follow, a like, all the rest. Share with who you think will enjoy it. Uh, we appreciate every little thing that happens and yep. the game. The game, the game. <sighs> You're just never going to... One day that will get old, but that day is not today. So, you know. It's, it's one of them. Now that we're finished with this podcast, welcome to the podcast. <sighs> God damn it. No, 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 no. <laughs> goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Run for your life. Close it out now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Deuces.
welcome in the new year. Uh-huh. I just had 16 days late. But 16 days later. But it's the first time we've been back. So. Better late than never. 